Act One of Ernani by Victor Hugo, translated by Mrs. Newton Crossland. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Personages of the drama. Ernani, read by Greg Giordano. Don Carlos, read by Jake Melizia. Don Rui Gomez de Silva read by alan mapstone danya soul read by jen broda king of bohemia read by algie pug the duke of bavaria read by jim hedrick the duke of gotha read by michael broomhill the duke of lutzelberg read by red run don sancho read by adrian stevens Don Matthias, read by John Payton. Don Ricardo, read by Larry Wilson. Don Garcia Suarez, read by Jim Hedrick. Don Francisco, read by Andrew Gantz. Don Juan de Haro, read by Kristen Hand. Don Gilles Teles Giron, read by Sandra Schmidt. Doña Josefa Duarte, Read by Lynette Calkins. Mountaineer. Read by Todd. The Lady. Read by Michelle Eaton. First Conspirator. Read by Adrian Stevens. Second Conspirator. Read by John Payton. Third Conspirator. Read by Andrew Gauntz. A Conspirator. Read by Todd. The Page read by jim hedrick stage directions read by sonia spain a d fifteen nineteen act first the king scene one saragossa a chamber night a lamp on the table doña josefa duarte an old woman dressed in black with body of her dress worked in jet in the fashion of isabella the catholic don carlos Doña Josefa alone. She draws the crimson curtains of the window and puts some armchairs in order. A knock at a little secret door on the right. She listens. A second knock. Can it be he already? Another knock. Tis indeed at the hidden stairway. A fourth knock. I must open quick. She opens the concealed door. Don Carlos enters, his face muffled in his cloak and his head drawn over his brows good evening to you sir she ushers him in he drops his cloak and reveals a rich dress of silk and velvet in the castilian style of fifteen nineteen she looks at him closely and recoils astonished what now not you signor ernani fire fire help oh help don carlos seizing her by the arm but two words more duenna and you die he looks at her intently. She is frightened into silence. Is this the room of Doña Sol, betrothed to her old uncle Duke de Pastrana? A very worthy lord he is, senile, white-haired and jealous. Tell me, is it true the beauteous Doña loves a smooth-faced youth, all whiskerless as yet, and sees him here each night in spite of envious care? Tell me, am I informed aright? She is silent he shakes her by the arm will you not speak you did forbid me sir to speak two words one will suffice i want a yes or no say is thy mistress doña sol de silva yes why no matter why just at this hour the venerable lover is away he is and she expects the young one now yes oh that i could die yes say duenna is this the place where they will surely meet yes hide me somewhere here you yes me why no matter why i hide you here yes here no never don carlos drawing from his girdle a purse and a dagger madame condescend to choose between a purse and dagger doña josefa taking the purse are you then the devil yes duenna 
Donia Josefa, opening a narrow cupboard in the wall. Go, go in. Don Carlos, examining the cupboard. This box? Donia Josefa, shutting up the cupboard. If you don't like it, go away. Don Carlos, reopening the cupboard. And yet? Again, examining it. Is this the stable where you keep the broomstick that you ride on? He crouches down in the cupboard with difficulty. Oh, oh, oh. Doña Josefa, joining her hands and looking ashamed. A man here. Don Carlos, from the cupboard still open. And was it a woman, then, your mistress here expected? Heavens, I hear the step of Doña Sol. Sir, shut the door, quick quick she pushes the cupboard door which closes don carlos from the closed cupboard remember if you breathe a word you die doña josefa alone who is this man if i cry out gracious there's none to hear all are asleep within the palace walls madam and i excepted pshaw the other'll come he wears a sword tis his affair and heaven keep us from powers of hell weighing the purse in her hand at least no thief he is enter doña sol in white doña josefa hides the purse scene two doña josefa don carlos hidden doña sol afterwards hernani josefa madam i some mischief dread for tis full time hernani should be here noise of steps at the secret door he's coming up go quick at once undo ere he has time to knock josefa opens the little door enter ernani in large cloak and large hat underneath costume of mountaineer of aragon grey with a cuirass of leather a sword a dagger and a horn at his girdle doña sol going to him ernani oh ah doña sol it is yourself at last i see your voice it is i hear oh why does cruel fate keep you so far from me i have such need of you to help my heart forget all else doña sol touching his clothes oh heavens your cloak is drenched the rain must pour i know not and the cold you must be cold i feel it not Take off this cloak, then, pray. Dona, beloved, tell me, when night brings happy sleep to you, so pure and innocent, sleep that half opes your mouth, closing your eyes with its light finger touch, does not some angel show how dear you are to an unhappy man by all the world abandoned and repulsed? Sir, you are late but tell me are you cold not near to you ah when the raging fire of jealous love burns in the veins and the true heart is riven by its own tempest we feel not the clouds o'erhead though storm and lightning they fling forth come give me now the cloak and your sword too ernani his hand on his sword no tis my other love faithful and pure the old duke dornia saw your promised spouse their uncle is he absent now oh yes this hour to us belongs and that is all only this hour and then comes afterwards what matter for i must forget or die angel one hour with thee with whom i would spend life and afterwards eternity ernani it is happiness to know the duke is absent i am like a thief who forces doors i enter see you rob an old man of an hour of your sweet voice and looks and i am happy though no doubt he would deny me e'en one hour although he steals my very life be calm giving the cloak to the duenna josefa this wet cloak take and dry it 
exit josepha Doña sol seats herself and makes a sign for ernani to draw near now come here ernani without appearing to hear her the duke then is not in the mansion now how grand you look he is away dear one let us not think about the duke madam but let us think of him the grave old man who loves you who will marry you how now he took a kiss from you the other day not think of him is that which grieves you thus a kiss upon my brow an uncle's kiss almost a father's no not so it was a lover's husband's jealous kiss to him to him it is that you will soon belong thinkst thou not of it oh the foolish tard with head drooped down to finish out his days wanting a wife he takes a girl himself most like a frozen spectre sees he not the senseless one that while with one hand he espouses you the other mates with death yet without shutter comes he twixt our hearts seek out the grave digger old man and give thy measure who is it that makes for you this marriage you are forced to it i hope they say the king desires it king this king my father on the scaffold died condemned by his and though one may have aged since then for even the shadow of that king his son his widow and for all to him allied my hate continues fresh him dead no more we count with but while still a child i swore that i had avenge my father on his son i sought him in all places charles the king of the castiles for hate is rife between our families the fathers wrestled long and without pity and without remorse for thirty years oh tis in vain that they are dead their hatred lives for them no peace has come their sons keep up the duel still ah then i find tis thou who hast made up this exorable marriage thee i sought thou comest in my way you frighten me charged with the mandate of anathema i frighten e'en myself but listen now this old old man for whom they destine you this rui de silva duc de pastrana count and grandee rich man of aragon in place of youth can give thee o oh, young girl such store of gold and jewels that your brow will shine mong royalty's own diadems and for your rank and wealth and pride and state queens many will perhaps envy you see then just what he is and now consider me my poverty is absolute i say only the forest where i ran barefoot in childhood did i know although perchance i too can claim illustrious blazonry that's dimmed just now by rusting stain of blood perchance i've rights though they are shrouded still and hid neath even folds of scaffold cloth yet which if my attempt one day succeeds may with my sword from out their sheath leap forth meanwhile from jealous heaven i've received but air and light and water gifts bestowed on all now wish you from the duke or me to be delivered you must choose twixt us whether you marry him or follow me you i will follow mong companions rude men all proscribed of whom the headsman knows the names already men whom neither steel nor touch of pity softens each one urged 
by some blood feud that's personal wilt thou then come they'd call thee mistress of my band for know you not that i a bandit am when i was hunted throughout spain alone in thickest forests and on mountains steep mong rocks which but the soaring eagle spied old catalonia like a mother proved among her hills free poor and stern i grew and now to-morrow if this horn should sound three thousand men would rally at the call you shudder and should pause to ponder well think what twill prove to follow me through woods and over mountain paths with comrades like the fiends that come in dreams to live in fear suspicious of a sound of voices eyes to sleep upon the earth drink at the stream and hear at night while nourishing perchance some wakeful babe the whistling musket balls to be a wanderer with me proscribed and when my father i shall follow then even to the scaffold you to follow me i'll follow you the duke is wealthy great and prosperous without a stain upon his ancient name he offers you his hand and can give all things treasures dignities and pleasure we'll set out to-morrow oh ernani censure not the audacity of this decision are you angel mine or demon only one thing do i know that i'm your slave now listen wheresoever you go i go pause you or move i'm yours why act i thus ah that i cannot tell only i want to see you evermore when sound of your receding footsteps dies i feel my heart stops beating without you myself seems absent but when i detect again the step i love my soul comes back i breathe i live once more Anani embracing her oh angel mine at midnight then to-morrow clap your hands three times beneath my window bring there your escort go i shall be strong and brave now know you who i am only my lord enough what matters else i follow you not so since you a woman weak decide to come with me tis right that you should know what name what rank what soul perchance what fate there hides beneath the low hernani here yes you have willed to link yourself for i with brigand would you still with outlaw mate don carlos opening the cupboard when will you finish all this history think you tis pleasant in this cupboard hole ernani recoils astonished dona sol screams and takes refuge in ernani's arms looking at don carlos with frightened gaze ernani his hand on the hilt of his sword who is this man oh heavens help be still my dona sol you'll wake up dangerous eyes never whatever be while i am near seek other help than mine to don carlos what do you hear i well i am not riding through the wood that you should ask he who affronts then jeers may cause his heir to laugh each sir in turn let us speak frankly you the lady love and come each night to mirror in her eyes your own i love her too and want to know who tis i have so often seen come in the window way while i stand at the door upon my word i'll send you out the way i enter as to that we'll see my love i offer unto madame shall we then agree to share it in her beauteous soul i've seen so much of tenderness and love and sentiment that she i am very sure has quite enough for ardent lovers twain therefore to-night wishing to end suspense on your account 
I forced an entrance, hid, and, to confess it all, I listened too. But I heard badly and was nearly choked, and then I crumpled my French vest, and so by Jove come out I must. Likewise my blade is not at ease, and hurries to leap out. Don Carlos, bowing. Sir, as you please. Ernani, drawing his sword. Defend yourself. Don Carlos draws his sword. Oh, heaven! Be calm, senora. Ernani, to Don Carlos. Tell me, sir, your name. Tell me yours. It is a fatal secret kept for my breathing in another's ear. Some day when I am conqueror, with my knee upon his breast, and dagger in his heart. Then tell to me this other's name. To thee what matters it? On guard, defend thyself. They cross swords. Doña Sol falls trembling into a chair. They hear knocks at the door. Doña Sol rising in alarm. Oh, heavens! There's someone knocking at the door! The champions pause. Enter Josefa at the little door in a frightened state. Ernani to Josefa. Who knocks in this way? Doña Josefa to Doña Sol. Madam, a surprise, an unexpected blow. It is the Duke come home. Doña Sol clasping her hands. The Duke! Then every hope is lost. Doña Josefa looking round. Gracious, the stranger out and swords and fighting here's a fine business the two combatants sheathe their swords don carlos draws his cloak round him and pulls his head down on his forehead more knocking what is to be done more knocking a voice without doña sol open to me doña josefa is going to the door when ernani stops her do not open doña josefa pulling out her rosary holy st james now draw us through this broil more knocking ernani pointing to the cupboard let's hide what in the cupboard yes go in i will take care that it shall hold us both thanks no it is too good a joke ernani pointing to secret door let's fly that way good night but as for me i stay here fire and fury sir we will be quits for this to doña sol what if i firmly barred the door don carlos to josefa open the door what is it that he says don carlos to josefa who hesitates bewildered open the door i say more knocking josefa opens the door trembling oh i shall die scene three the same with Don Rui Gomez de Silva in black, white hair and beard, servants with lights. My niece with two men at this hour of night. Calm all. The thing is worth exposing here. To Doña Sol. Now, by St. John of Avila, I vow that we three with you, madam, are by two too many to the two young men my young sirs what do you hear when we the seed and bernard giants both of spain and of the world they travelled through castile protecting women honouring old men for them steel armour had less weight than your fine velvets have for you these men respected whitened beards and when they loved their love was consecrated by the church never did such men cousin or betray for reason that they had to keep unflawed the honour of their house wished they to wed they took a stainless wife in open day before the world with sword or axe or lance in hand but as for villains such as you who come at eve 
peeping behind them oft to steal away the honour of men's wives in absence of their husbands i declare the seed our ancestor had he but known such men he would have plucked away from them nobility usurped have made them kneel while he with flat of sword their blazon dashed behold what were the men of former times whom i with anguish now compare with these i see to-day what do you hear is it to say a white-haired man's but fit for youth to point at when he passes in the street and jeer at there shall they so laugh at me tried soldier of zamora at the least not yours will be that laugh but duke be still what you have sword and lance falcons the chase and songs to sing neath balconies at night festivals pleasures feathers in your hats raiment of silk balls youth and joy of life but wearied of them all at any price you want a toy and take an old man for it ah though you've broke the toy god wills that it in bursting should be flung back in your face now follow me most noble duke follow follow me sirs is this alone a jest what i've a treasure mine to guard with care a young girl's character a family's fame this girl i love by kinship to me bound pledge soon to change her ring for one from me i know her spotless chaste and pure yet when i leave my home one hour i ruy gomez de silva find a thief who steals from me my honour glides unto my house back back make clean your hands o oh, base and soulless men whose presence brushing by must serve to taint our women's fame but no tis well proceed have i not something more snatches off his collar take tread it now beneath your feet degrade my golden fleece throws off his head pluck at my hair insult me every way and then to-morrow through the town make boast that lowest scoundrels in their vilest sport have never shamed a nobler brow nor soiled more whitened hair my lord don Rui gomez to his servants a rescue grooms bring me my dagger of toledo axe and dirk to the young men now follow follow me ye too don carlos stepping forward a little duke this is not the pressing thing just now first we've to think of maximilian dead the emperor of germany opens his cloak and shows his face previously hidden by his head jest you heavens the king the king the king of spain yes charles my noble duke are thy wits gone the emperor my grandsire is no more i knew it not until this eve and came at once to tell it you and counsel ask incognito at night knowing you well a loyal subject that i much regard the thing is very simple that has caused this hubbub don Rui gomez sends away servants by a sign and approaches don carlos dona sol looks at the king with fear and surprise ernani from a corner regards him with flashing eyes but oh why was it the door was not more quickly opened reason good 
remember, or your escort, when it is a weighty secret of the state I bear that brings me to your palace, it is not to tell it to thy servants. Highness, oh, forgive me, some appearances. Good father, thee governor of the castle of Figuer I've made, but whom thy governor shall I make? Oh, pardon. Tis enough. We'll say no more of this. The emperor is dead. Your highness's grandfather dead? Ay, duke, you see me here in deep affliction. Who will succeed him? A duke of Saxony is named. The throne Francis I of France aspires to mount. Where do the electors of the empire meet? They say at Aix-la-Chapelle, or at Spire, or Frankfort. But our king, whom God preserve, has he not thought of empire? Constantly. To you it should revert. I know it, duke. Your father was Archduke of Austria. I hope twill be remembered that you are grandson to him who but just now has changed the imperial purple for a winding sheet. I am, besides, a citizen of Ghent. In my own youth your grandfather I saw. Alas, I am the sole survivor now of all that generation past. All dead. He was an emperor magnificent and mighty. Rome is for me. Valiant, firm, and not tyrannical his head might well become the old german body he bends over the king's hands and kisses them yet so young i pity you indeed thus plunged in such a sorrow ah the pope is anxious now to get back sicily the isle that's mine tis ruled that sicily cannot belong unto an emperor therefore it is that he desires me emperor to be made and then to follow that as docile son i give up naples too let us but have the eagle and we'll see if i allow its wings to be thus clipped what joy twould be for this great veteran of the throne to see your brow so fit encircled by his crown ah highness we together weep for him the christian emperor so good so great the holy father's clever he will say this isle unto my state should come tis but a tattered rag that scarce belongs to spain what will you do with this ill-shapen isle that's sown upon the empire by a thread your empire is ill-made but quick come here the scissors bring and let us cut away thanks holy father but i have luck I think that many pieces such as this upon the holy empire will be sown, and if some rags from me are taken, I mean with isles and duchies to replace them all. Console yourself, for we shall see again the dead more holy and more great. There is an empire of the just. Francis I is all ambition the old emperor dead quick he'll turn wooing has he not fair france most christian tis a place worth holding fast once to king louis did my grandsire say if i were god and had two sons i'd make the elder god the second king of france to don Rui gomez think you that francis has a chance to win he is a victor there'd be all to change the golden bull doth foreigners exclude in a like manner highness you would be accounted king of spain but i was born a citizen of ghent his last campaign exalted francis mightily the eagle that soon perchance upon my helm will gleam knows also how to open its wings and knows your highness latin ah not much a pity that 
the german nobles like the best those who in latin speak to them with haughty spanish they will be content for trust king charles twill be of small account when master for the voice what tongue it speaks to flanders i must go your king dear duke must emperor return the king of france will stir all means i must be quick to win i shall set out at once do you then go o highness without clearing aragon of those fresh bandits who among the hills their daring insolence show everywhere to the duke de arcos i have orders given that he should quite exterminate the band but is order given to its chief to let the thing be done who is this chief his name i know not but the people say that he's an awkward customer <laughs> i know that now he somewhere in galicia hides with a few soldiers soon will capture him then it was false the rumour which declared that he is hereabouts quite false thou canst accommodate me here to-night don Rui gomez bowing to the ground thanks thanks highness he calls his servants you will do all honour to the king my guest the servants re-enter with lights the duke arranges them in two rows to the door at the back meanwhile dona sol approaches el nani softly the king observes them dona sol to el nani to-morrow midnight without fail beneath my window clap your hands three times to-morrow night don carlos aside to-morrow aloud to dona sol whom he approaches with politeness let me now escort you hence i pray he leads her to the door she goes out ernani his hand in his breast on dagger hilt my dagger true don carlos coming back aside our man here has the look of being trapped he takes ernani aside i've crossed my sword with yours that honour sir i've granted you for many reasons i suspect you such but to betray you now would shame the king go therefore freely e'en i deign to aid your flight don Rui gomez coming back and pointing to ernani this lord who's he one of my followers who'll soon depart they go out with servants and lights the duke proceeding with waxlight in his hand scene four ernani alone one of thy followers i am o king well said for night and day and step by step i follow thee with eye upon thy path and dagger in my hand my race in me pursues thy race in thee and now behold thou art my rival for an instant i twixt love and hate was balanced in the scale not large enough my heart for her and thee in loving her oblivious i became of all my hate of thee but since tis thou that comes to will i should remember it i recollect my love it is that tilts the uncertain balance while it falls entire upon the side of hate thy follower tis thou hast said it never courtier yet of thy accursed court or noble fane to kiss thy shadow not a sense shall with human heart abjured in serving thee no dog within the palace train the king to follow will thy steps more closely haunt and certainly than i what they would have these famed grandees is hollow title or some toy that shines some golden sheep to hang about the neck not such a fool am i what i would have is not some favour vain but tis thy blood won by my conquering steel thy soul from out thy body forced with all that at the bottom of thy heart was reached after deep delving 
go you are in front i follow thee my watchful vengeance walks with me and whispers in mine ear go where thou wilt i'm there to listen and to spy and noiselessly my step will press on thine no day shouldst thou but turn thy head o king for thou wilt find me motionless and grave at festivals at night shouldst thou look back still wilt thou see my flaming eyes behind exit by the little door end of act one Act two of Ernani by Victor Hugo, translated by Mrs. Newton Crosland. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Second Act The Bandit Saragossa. Scene one A square before the Palace of Silva. On the left, the high walls of the palace with a window and a balcony. Below the window, a little door. To the right at the back houses of the street night here and there are a few windows still lit up shining in the front of the houses don carlos don sancho sanchez de zuniga comte de monterey don matias centurion marquis d'almunian don ricardo de rojas lord of casa palma all four arrive don carlos at the head hats pulled down and wrapped in long cloaks which their swords inside raise up don carlos looking up at the balcony behold we're at the balcony the door my heart is bounding pointing to the window which is dark ah no light as yet he looks at the windows where light shines although it shines just where i'd have it not while well, where i wish for light is dark your highness now let us of this traitor speak again and you permitted him to go tis true and he perchance was major of the band were he the major or the captain even no crowned king ever had a haughtier air highness his name don carlos his eyes fixed on the window munoz fernan with gesture of a man suddenly recollecting a name in e perchance ernani yes twas he the chief ernani cannot you recall his speech oh i heard nothing in the vile and wretched cupboard wherefore let him slip when there you had him don carlos turning round gravely and looking him in the face count de monterey you question me the two nobles step back and are silent besides it was not he was in my mind it was my mistress not his head i wanted madly i'm in love with two dark eyes the loveliest in the world my friends two mirrors and two rays two flames i heard but of their history these words to-morrow come at midnight twas enough the joke is excellent for while that he the bandit lover by some murderous deed some grave to dig is hindered and delayed i softly take his dove from out its nest highness it would make the thing far more complete if we the dove in gating killed the kite count tis most capital advice your hand is prompt don ricardo bowing low and by what title will it please the king that i be count twas a mistake don ricardo to don sancho the king has called me count enough enough to don ricardo i let the title fall but pick it up don ricardo bowing again thanks highness a fine count count by mistake the king walks to the back of the stage watching eagerly the lighted windows the two lords talk together at the front don matias to don sancho what think you that the king will do when once the beauty is taken don sancho looking sideways at don ricardo countess she'll be made lady of honour afterwards and then if there's a son 
he will be king ah so my lord a bastard let him be a count were one his highness would one choose as king a countess son he'd make her marchioness ere then dear marquis bastards they are kept for conquered countries they for viceroys serve don carlos comes forward don carlos looking with vexation at the lighted windows might one not say they're jealous eyes that watch ah there are two which darken we shall do weary the time of expectation seems sirs who can make it go more quickly that is what we often ask ourselves within the palace tis the thing my people say again with you the last window light is extinguished the last light now is gone turning towards the balcony of dona sol still dark o oh, hateful window when wilt thou light up the night is dark come dona sol and shine like to a star to don ricardo is it midnight yet almost ah oh, we must finish for the other one at any moment may appear a light appears in dona sol's chamber her shadow is seen through the glass my friends a lamp and she herself seen through the pane never did daybreak charm me as this sight let's hasten with the signal she expects we must clap hands three times an instant more and you will see her but our number perhaps will frighten her go all three out of sight beyond there watching for the man we want twixt us my friends we'll share the loving pair for me the girl the brigand is for you best thanks if he appear from ambuscade rush quickly knock him down and while the dupe recovers from the blow it is for me to carry safely off the darling prize we'll laugh anon but kill him not outright he's brave i own killing's a grave affair the lords bow and go don carlos waits till they are quite gone then claps his hands twice at the second time the window opens and dona sol appears on the balcony scene two don carlos dona sol dona sol from the balcony ernani is that you don carlos aside the devil we must not parley he claps his hands again i am coming down she closes the window and the light disappears the next minute the little door opens and she comes out the lamp in her hand and the mantle over her shoulders ernani don carlos pulls his head down on his face and hurries towards her dona sol letting her lamp fall heavens tis not his footstep she attempts to go back but don carlos runs to her and seizes her by the arm dona sol tis not his voice oh misery what voice is there that thou couldst hear that would be more a lover's it is still a lover here and king for one the king ah wish command a kingdom waits thy will for he whom thou hast vanquished is the king thy lord tis charles thy slave dona sol trying to escape from him to the rescue help ernani help thy fear is maidenly and worthy thee and tis not thy bandit tis thy king that holds thee now ah oh, no the bandit's you are you not ashamed the blush unto my own cheeks mounts for you are these the exploits to be noised abroad a woman thus at night to seize my bandit's worth a hundred of such kings i do declare if a man were born at level of his soul and god made rank proportional to his heart he would be king and prince and you the robber be don carlos trying to entice her madam do you forget my father was a count and you i'll make a duchess dona sol repulsing him cease all this is shameful go she retreats a few steps nothing don carlos can there twixt us be my father for you freely shed his blood i am of noble birth and heedful ever of my name's purity i am too high to be your concubine too low to be your wife princess carry to worthless girls king charles your vile addresses 
or if me you treat insultingly, I'll show you well that I am a woman and a noble dame. Well, then, but come, and you shall share my throne, my name. You shall be queen and empress. No, it is a snare. Besides, I frankly speak, since, Highness, it concerns you. I avow I'd rather with my king Ernani roam, in outcast from the world and from the law. No thirst and hunger, wandering all the year, sharing the hardships of his destiny, exile and warfare, morning hours of terror, than be an empress with an emperor. Oh, happy man is he. What, poor proscribed? Tis well with him, though poor proscribed he be, for he's beloved. An angel watches him. I'm desolate. You hate me, then. I love you not. Don Carlos, seizing her violently. Well, then, it matters not to me whether you love me or you love me not. You shall come with me. Yes, for that my hand's the stronger, and I will it. And we'll see if I for nothing am the king of Spain and of the Indies. Doña Sol struggling. Highness, pity me. Your king and only have to choose among the countesses, the duchesses, the great court ladies. All have love prepared to meet and answer yours. But what has my proscribed received from niggard fortune? You possess Castile and Aragon, Mercia and Leon, Navarre, and still ten kingdoms more, Flanders and India with the mines of gold you own, an empire without peer, and all so vast that ne'er the sun sets on it. And when you, the king, have all, would you take me, poor girl, from him who has but me alone? She throws herself on her knees. He tries to draw her up. Come, come, I cannot listen. Come with me. I'll give of Spain a fourth part unto thee. Say now, what wilt thou? Choose. Doña Sol struggling in his arms. For mine own honour's sake. I'll only from your highness take this dirk. She snatches the poniard from his girdle. Approach me now but by a step. The beauty. I wonder not she loves a rebel now. He makes a step towards her. She raises the dirk. Another step. I kill you and myself. He retreats again. She turns and cries aloud. Ernani! Oh, Ernani! Peace. One step, and all is finished. Madam, to extremes I'm driven. Yonder there I have three men to force you, followers of mine. Ernani coming suddenly behind him. But one you have forgotten. The king turns and sees Ernani motionless behind him in the shade, his arms crossed under the long cloak which is wrapped round him, and the brim of his hat raised up. Doña Sol makes an exclamation and runs to him. Scene three. Don Carlos, Doña Sol, Ernani. Ernani motionless, his arms still crossed and his fiery eyes fixed on the king. Heaven, my witnesses, that far from here it was I wished to seek him. Ernani, save me from him. My dear love, fear not. Now what could all my friends in town be doing thus to let pass by the chief of the Bohemians? Oh, Monterey. Your friends are in the hands of mine just now. So call not on their powerless swords. For three that you might claim, sixty to me would come, each one worth four of yours. So let us now our quarrel terminate. What? You have dared to lay a hand upon this girl? It was an act of folly, great Castilian king, and one of cowardice. Sir Bandit, hold. There must be no reproach from you to me. He jeers. Oh, I am not a king, but when a king insults me, and above all jeers, my anger swells and surges up and lifts me to his height take care when i am offended men fear far more the reddening of my brow than helm of king full hardy therefore you if still your lord by hope 
seizes his arm know you what hand now grasps you listen twas your father who was death of mine i hate you for it you my title and my wealth have taken you i hate and the same woman now we love i hate hate from my soul's depths you i hate that's well and yet this night my hate was lulled only one thought one wish one want i had twas dona sol and i absorbed in love came here to find you daring against her to strive with infamous design you you the man forgot thus in my pathway placed i tell you king you are demented ah king charles now see you're taken in the snare laid by yourself and neither flight nor help for thee is possible i hold thee fast besieged alone surrounded by thy foes bloodthirsty ones what wilt thou do dare you to question me pish pish i would not wish an arm obscure should strike thee tis not so my vengeance should have play tis i alone must deal with thee therefore defend thyself he draws his sword i am your lord the king strike but no duel highness thou mayest remember yesterday thy sword encountered mine i yesterday could do it i your name knew not and you were ignorant of my rank not so to-day you know who i am i who you are now perchance no duel you can murder do think you that kings to me are sacred come defend thyself you will assassinate me then ernani falls back the king looks at him with eagle eyes ugh bandits say you dare to think that your most vile brigades may safely spread through towns ye blood-stained murderous miscreant crew but that you'll play at magnanimity as if we'd deign the ennobling of your dirks by touch of our own swords we victims duped no crime enthralls you after you it trails jewels with you away and murder me ernani morose and thoughtful plays for some instants with the hilt of his sword then turns sharply towards the king and snaps the blade on the pavement go then the king half turns towards him and looks at him haughtily we shall have fitter meetings go get thee away tis well i go sir soon unto the ducal palace i your king will then employ the magistrate is there yet put a price upon your head oh yes my master from this day i reckon you a rebel traitorous subject you i warn i will pursue you everywhere and make you outlaw from my kingdom that i am already that is well but france is near to spain there's refuge there but i shall be the emperor of germany and you under the empire's ban shall be ah well i still shall have the remnants of the world from which to brave you and with havens safe o'er which you will have no power but when i've gained the world then i shall have the grave your plot so insolent i shall know how to thwart vengeance is lame and comes with lagging steps but still it comes don carlos with a half laugh of disdain for touch of lady whom the bandit loves ernani with flashing eyes dost thou remember king i hold thee still make me not recollect o oh, 
future Roman Caesar, that despised I have thee in my all too loyal hand, that I only need to close it now to crush the egg of thy imperial eagle. Then do it. Get away. He takes off his cloak and throws it on the shoulders of the king. Go, fly, and take this cloak to shield thee from some knife I fear among our ranks. The king wraps himself in the cloak. At present safely go. My thwarted vengeance for myself I keep. It makes gainst every other hand thy life secure. And you who've spoken thus to me, ask not for mercy on some future day. Exit Don Carlos. Scene four. Ernani, Dona Sol. Dona Sol seizing Ernani's hand. Now let us fly. Be quick. It well becomes you, loved one, in the trial hour to prove thus strong, unchangeable, and willing even to the end and depth of all to cling to me a noble wish worthy a faithful soul but thou o oh god dost see that to accept the joy that to my cavern she would bring the treasure of a beauty that a king now covets and that dona's soul to me should all belong that she with me should bide and all our lives be joined that this should be without regret remorse it is too late the scaffold is too near what is it you say the king whom to his face just now i braved will punish me for having dared to show him mercy he already perhaps has reached his palace and is calling round him guards and servants his great lords his headsmen heavens ernani oh i shudder never mind let us be quick and fly together together no the hour has passed for that alas when to my eyes thou didst reveal thyself so good and generous deigning even to love me with a helpful love i could offer you i wretched one the hills the woods the torrents bread of the proscribed the bed of turf all that the forest gives thy pity then emboldened me but now to ask of thee to share the scaffold no no dona soul that is for me alone and yet you promised even that ernani falling on his knees angel at this moment when perchance from out of the shadow death approaches to wind up all mournfully a life of mournfulness i do declare that here a man proscribed enduring trouble great profound and rocked in blood-stained cradle black as is the gloom which spreads o'er all my life i still declare i am a happy to be envied man for you have loved me and your love have owned for you have whispered blessings on my brow accursed dona sol leaning over his head ernani praised be the fate sweet and propitious that for me now sets this flower upon the precipice's brink raising himself tis not to you that i am speaking thus it is to heaven that hears and unto god let me go with you ah twould be a crime to pluck the flower while falling in the abyss go i have breathed the perfume tis enough remould your life by me so sadly marred this old man wed tis i release you now to darkness i return be happy thou be happy and forget no i will have my portion of thy shroud i follow thee i hang upon thy steps ernani pressing her in his arms oh let me go alone exiled proscribed a fearful man am i 
he quits her with a convulsive movement and is going Doña sol mournfully and clasping her hands ernani do you fly from me ernani returning well then no no you will it and i stay behold me come into my arms i'll wait as long as thou wilt have me let us rest forgetting then he seats her on a bench be seated on this stone he places himself at her feet the liquid light of your eyes inundates mine own sing me some song such as sometimes you used at eve to warble with the tears in those dark orbs let us be happy now and drink the cup is full this hour is ours the rest is only folly speak and say enrapture me is it not sweet to love and know that he who kneels before you loves to be but two alone is it not sweet to speak of love in stillness of the night when nature rests oh let me slumber now and on thy bosom dream oh dona sol my love my darling noise of bells in the distance dona sol starting up frightened toxin dost thou hear the toxin ernani still kneeling at her feet eh no tis our bridal bell they're ringing the noise increases confused cries lights at all the windows on the roofs and in the streets rise oh fly great god the town lights up ernani half rising a torchlight wedding for us tis the nuptials these of death and of the tombs noise of swords and cries ernani lying down on the stone bench let us sleep again a mountaineer rushing in sword in hand the runners sir the alcades rush out in cavalcades with mighty force be quick my captain quick ernani rises dona sol pale ah oh, thou wert right oh help us ernani to mountaineer it is well i'm ready confused cries outside death to the bandit ernani to mountaineer quick thy sword to dona sol farewell tis i have been thy ruin oh where canst thou go pointing to the little door the door is free let us escape that way heavens desert my friends what dost thou say these clamours terrify remember if thou diest i must die ernani holding her in his arms a kiss ernani husband master mine ernani kissing her forehead alas it is the first perchance the last ernani exit dona sol falls on the bench end of act two Act three of Ernani by Victor Hugo, translated by Mrs. Newton Crosland. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Third Act The Old Man The Castle of Silva in the midst of the mountains of Aragon. Scene one The Gallery of Family Portraits of Silva, a great hall of which these portraits, surrounded with rich frames, and surmounted by ducal coronets and gilt escutcheons form the decoration at the back a lofty gothic door between the portraits complete panoplies of armour of different centuries dona sol pale and standing near a table don rui gomez de silva seated in his great carved oak chair at last the day has come and in an hour thou be my duchess and embrace me 
not thine uncle then, but hast thou pardoned me? That I was wrong, I own. I raised thy blush, I made thy cheek turn pale. I was too quick with my suspicions, should have stayed to hear before condemning. But appearances should take the blame. Unjust we were. Certes, the two young handsome men were there. But then, no matter. Well, I know that I should not have credited my eyes. But, my poor child, what wouldst thou with the old? Doña Sol, seriously and without moving. You ever talk of this? Who is there blames you? I myself should have known that such a soul as yours never has gallants. When tis Doña Sol, and when good Spanish blood is in her veins. Truly, my lord, tis good and pure. Her chance twill soon be seen. Don Ruy Gomez, rising and going towards her. Now list. One cannot be the master of himself so much in love as I am now with thee. And I am old and jealous, and am cross. And why? Because I'm old. Because the beauty, grace, or youth of others frightens, threatens me. Because while jealous thus of others, of myself I am ashamed. What mockery that this love which to the heart brings back such joy and warmth should halt and but rejuvenate the soul forgetful of the body. When I see a youthful peasant singing blithe and gay in the green meadows, often then I muse. I in my dismal paths am murmur low. Oh, I would give my battlemented towers and ancient ducal donjon and my fields of corn and all my forest lands and flocks so vast which feed upon my hills, my name and all my ancient titles, ruins mine and ancestors who must expect me soon, all, all I'd give for his new cot and a brow unwrinkled. For his hair is raven black, and his eyes shine like yours. Beholding him you might exclaim, a young man this, and then would think of me so old. I know it well. I am named Silva. Ah, but that is not enough. I say it, see it. Now behold to what excess I love thee. All I'd give could I be like thee, young and handsome now vain dream that i were young again who must by long long years precede thee to the tomb who knows and yet i pray you me believe the frivolous swains have not so much of love within their hearts as on their tongues a girl may love and trust one if she dies for him he laughs the strong-winged and gay-painted birds that warble sweet and in the thicket trill will change their loves as they their plumage vault. They are the old, with voice and colour gone and beauty fled, who have the resting wings we love the best. Our steps are slow and dim our eyes, our brows are furrowed, but the heart is never wrinkled. When an old man loves, he should be spared. The heart is ever young, and always it can bleed. This love of mine is not a plaything made of glass to shake and break. 
it is a love severe and sure solid profound paternal strong as is the oak which forms my ducal chair see then how well i love thee and in other ways i love thee hundred other ways e'en as we love the dawn the flowers the heavens blue to see thee mark thy graceful step each day thy forehead pure thy brightly beaming eye i'm joyous feeling that my soul will have perpetual festival alas and then know you how much the world admires applauds a woman angel pure and like a dove when she an old man comforts and consoles as he is tottering to the marble tomb passing away by slow degrees as she watches and shelters him and condescends to bear with him the useless one that seems but fit to die <clears throat> it is a sacred work and worthy of all praise effort supreme of a devoted heart to comfort him unto the end and without loving perhaps to act as if she loved ah thou to me wilt be this angel with a woman's heart who will rejoice the old man's soul again and share his latter years and by respect a daughter be and by your pity like a sister prove far from preceding me tis likely me you'll follow to the grave my lord because that we are young is not a reason we should live alas i know and tell you often old men tarry long and see the young go first their eyes shut fast by sudden stroke as on a sepulchre that was still open falls the closing stone oh cease my child such saddening discourse or i shall scold you such a day as this sacred and joyous is and by the by time summons us are you not ready yet for the chapel when we are called be quick to don the bridal dress each moment do i count there is abundant time oh no there's not enter a page what want you at the door my lord a man a pilgrim beggar or i know not what is craving here a shelter let him in whoever he may be good enters with the stranger that we welcome what's the news from the outside world what of the bandit chief that filled our forests with his rebel band ernani lion of the mountains now is done for Doña Sol aside. God. Don Rui Gomez to the page. How so? The troops destroyed. The king himself has led the soldiers on. Ernani's head, a thousand crowns is worth, upon the spot. But now he's dead, they say. Doña Sol aside. What? Without me, Ernani? And thank heaven. So he is dead the rebel now dear love we can rejoice go then and deck thyself my pride my darling day of double joy oh morning robes exit doña sol don rui gomez to the page the casket quickly send that i'm to give her he seats himself in his chair tis my longing now to see her all adorned madonna like with her bright eyes and aid of my rich gems she will be beautiful enough to make a pilgrim kneel before her as for him who asks asylum bid him enter here excuses from us offer run be quick the page bows and exit tis ill to keep a guest long waiting thus the door at the back opens ere nani appears disguised as a pilgrim 
the duke rises scene two don ruy gomez ernani ernani pauses at the threshold of the door my lord peace and all happiness be yours don ruy gomez saluting him with his hand to thee be peace and happiness my guest ernani enters the duke reseats himself art thou a pilgrim ernani bowing yes no doubt you come from armilas not so i hither came by other road there was some fighting there among the troop of bandits was it not i know not what's become of him the chief they call ernani dost thou know my lord who is this man dost thou not know him then for thee so much the worst thou wilt not gain the good round sum see you a rebel he that hath been long unpunished to madrid should you be going perhaps you'll see him hanged i go not there a price on his head for any man who takes him ernani aside let one come whither good pilgrim goest thou my lord i am bound for saragossa a vow made in honour of a saint or of our lady yes of our lady duke of the pillar of the pillar we must be soulless quite not to acquit us of the vows we make unto the saints but thine accomplished then hast thou not other purposes in view or is to see the pillar all you wish yes i would see the lights and candles burn and at the end of the dim corridor our lady in her glowing shrine with cope all golden then would satisfied return indeed that's well brother what is thy name mine ruy de silva is my name you can conceal it if you will none here has right to know it camest thou to asylum ask yes duke remain and know thou art welcome here for nothing wants and as for what thou art named but call thyself my guest it is enough whoever thou mayst be without demur i take in satan if god sent him to me the folding doors at the back open enter dona sol in nuptial attire behind her pages and lackeys and two women carrying on a velvet cushion a casket of engraved silver which they place upon the table and which contains a jewel case with duchess's coronet necklaces bracelets pearls and diamonds in profusion ernani breathless and scared looks at dona sol with flaming eyes without listening to the duke scene three the same dona sol pages lackeys women don ruy gomez continuing behold my blessed lady to have prayed to her will bring thee happiness he offers his hand to dona sol still pale and grave come then my bride what not thy coronet nor ring who wishes now a thousand golden crowns to win all turn to him astonished he tears off his pilgrim's robe and crushes it under his feet revealing himself in the dress of a mountaineer i am ernani heavens oh he lives ernani to the lackeys see i'm the man they seek to the duke you wish to know my name diego or perez no no i have a grander name ernani name of the banished the proscribed see you this head tis worth enough of gold to pay for festival 
to the lackeys i give it to you all take tie my hands my feet but there's no need the chain that binds me is one i shall not break Doña Sol aside oh misery folly this my guest is mad a lunatic your guest a bandit is oh do not heed him what i say is truth a thousand gold crowns the sum is large and sir i will not answer now for all my people and so much the better should a willing one be found to the lackeys now seize and sell me be quiet or they'll take you at your word friends this your opportunity is good i tell you i'm the rebel the proscribed ernani silence i am he Doña Sol, in a low voice to him, Be still. Ernani, half turning to Doña Sol, There's marrying here. My spouse awaits me too. To the Duke. She is less beautiful, my lord, than yours, but not less faithful. She is death. To the lackeys. Not one of you has yet come forth. For pity's sake, Ernani to the lackeys. A thousand golden crowns, Hernani here. This is the demon, Ernani to a young lackey. Come, thou'lt earn this sum, then rich, thou wilt from lackey change again to man. To the other lackeys who do not stir, and also you, you waver ah have i not misery enough my friend to touch thy life they'd peril each their own wert thou ernani or a hundred times as bad i must protect my guest were e'en an empire offered for his life against the king himself for thee i hold from god if hair of thine be injured may i die to doña sol my niece who in an hour will be my wife go to your room i am about to arm the castle shut the gates exit followed by servants ernani looking with despair at his empty girdle not even a knife doña sol after the departure of the duke takes a few steps as if to follow her women then pauses and when they are gone comes back to ernani with anxiety scene four ernani doña sol ernani looks at the nuptial jewel case with a cold and apparently indifferent gaze then he tosses back his head and his eyes light up accept my gratulations words tell not how i am enchanted by these ornaments he approaches the casket this ring is in fine taste the coronet i like the necklace shows surpassing skill the bracelet's rare but oh a hundred times less so than she who neath a forehead pure conceals a faithless heart examining the casket again what for all this have you now given of your love some share but that for nothing goes great god to thus deceive and still to live and have no shame looking at the jewels but after all perchance this pearl is false and copper stands for gold and glass and lead make out sham diamonds pretended gems are these false sapphires and false jewels all if so thy heart is like them duchess false thyself but only gilded he returns to the casket yet no no they are all real beautiful and good 
he dares not cheat who stands so near the tomb nothing is wanting he takes up one thing after another necklaces are here and brilliant earrings and the duchess crown and golden ring oh marvel many thanks for love so certain faithful and profound the precious box Doña Sol, she goes to the casket, feels in it, and draws forth a dagger. You have not reached its depths. This is the dagger which, by kindly aid of patron saint, I snatched from Charles the King, when he made offer to me of a throne, which I refused for you, who now insult me. Ernani, falling at her feet. Oh, let me on my knees arrest those tears the tears that beautify thy sorrowing eyes then after thou canst freely take my life i pardon you ernani in my heart there is but love for you and she forgives and loves me still but who can also teach me to forgive myself that i have used such words angel for heaven reserved say where you trod that i may kiss the ground my love oh no i should to thee be odious but listen say again i love thee still say it and reassure a heart that doubts say it for often with such little words a woman's tongue hath cured a world of woes Doña sol absorbed and without hearing him to think my love had such short memory that all these so ignoble men could shrink a heart where his name was enthroned to love by them thought worthier alas i have blasphemed if i were in thy place i should be weary of the furious madman who can only pity after he has struck i'd bid him go drive me away i say and i will bless thee for thou hast been good and sweet too long thou hast myself endured for i am evil i should blacken still thy days with my dark nights at last it is too much thy soul is lofty beautiful and pure if i am evil is thy fault marry the old duke then for he is good and noble by the mother's side he has omedo by his father's alcala with him be rich and happy by one act know you not what this generous hand of mine can offer thee of splendour ah alone a dowry of misfortune and the choice of blood or tears exile captivity and death and terrors that environ me these are thy necklaces and jewelled crown never elated bridegroom to his bride offered a casket filled more lavishly but tis with misery and mournfulness marry the old man he deserves thee well ah who could ever think my head proscribed fit mate for forehead pure what looker on that saw thee calm and beautiful me rash and violent thee peaceful like a flower growing in shelter me by tempests dashed on rocks unnumbered who could dare to say that the same law should guide our destinies no god who ruleth all things well did not make thee for me no right from heaven above have i to thee and i'm resigned to fate i have thy heart it is a theft i know unto a worthier yield it never yet upon our love has heaven smiled tis false if i have said thy destiny it was to vengeance and to love i bid adieu my life is ending useless i will go and take away with me my double dream ashamed i could not punish or could charm i have been made for hate who only wished to love forgive and fly me these are my prayers reject them not 
and say will be my last thou livest i am dead i see not why thou shouldst immure thee in my tomb in great mountains of old aragon galicia estremadura unto all who come around me i bring misery your sons the best without remorse i've taken to flight and now behold them dead the bravest brave of all spain's sons lie soldier-like upon the hills their backs to earth the living god before and if their eyes could ope they'd look on heaven's blue see what i do to all who join me is it fortune any one should covet dona soul oh take the duke take hell or take the king all would be well all must be better than myself i say no longer have i a friend to think of me and it is fully time that thy turn comes for i must be alone fly from me then from my contagion make not faithful love a duty of religion fly from me for pity's sake thou think'st me perhaps a man like others one with sense who knows the end at which he aims and acts accordingly oh undeceive thyself i am a force that cannot be resisted agent blind and deaf of mournful mysteries a soul of misery made of gloom where shall i go i cannot tell but i am urged compelled by an impetuous breath and wild decree i fall and fall and cannot stop descent if sometimes breathless i dare turn my head a voice cries out go on and the abyss is deep and to the depths i see it red with flame or blood around my fearful course all things break up all die woe be to them who touch me fly i say turn thee away from my so fatal path alas without intending i shall do thee ill great god my demon is a formidable one but there's a thing impossible to it my happiness for thee is happiness therefore go seek another lord for thou art not for me if heaven that my fate abjures should smile on me believe it not it would be irony marry the duke twas not enough to tear my heart but you must break it now ah me no longer than you love me oh my heart it's very life thou art the glowing hearth whence all warmth comes art thou wilt thou then blame me that i fly from thee adored one no i blame thee not only i know that i shall die of it die and for what for me can it then be that thou shouldst die for cause so small dona sol bursting into tears enough she falls into a chair ernani seating himself near her and thou art weeping and tis still my fault and who will punish me for thou i know wilt pardon still who who can tell thee half the anguish that i suffer when a tear of thine obscures and drowns those radiant eyes whose lustre is my joy my friends are dead oh i am crazed forgive me i would love i know not how alas i love with love profound weep not the rather let us die oh that i had a world to give to thee oh wretched miserable man i am dona sol throwing herself on his neck you are my lion generous and superb i love you ah this love would be a good supreme 
if we could die of too much love thou art my lord i love thee and belong to thee ernani letting his head fall on her shoulder how sweet would be a poignard stroke from thee fear you not god will punish you for words like these ernani still leaning on her shoulder well then let him unite us i have resisted thou wouldst have it thus whilst they are in each other's arms absorbed and gazing with ecstasy at each other don Rui gomez enters by the door at the back of the stage he sees them and stops on the threshold as if petrified scene five ernani dona sol don Rui gomez don Rui gomez motionless on the threshold with arms crossed and this is the requital that i find of hospitality oh heavens the duke both turn as if awakening with a start don Rui gomez still motionless this then is the recompense from thee my guest good duke go see if all thy walls be high and if the door is closed an archer place within his tower and go the castle round thyself for us seek in thine arsenal for armour that will fit at sixty years resume thy battle harness and then see the loyalty with which we will repay such service thou for us do thus and we do this for thee o oh, blessed saints of heaven past sixty years i've lived and met sometimes unbridled souls and off my dirk have drawn from out its scabbard raising on my path the hangman's game birds murderers i have seen and coiners traitorous varlets poisoning their masters and i've seen men die without a prayer or sight of crucifix i've seen sforza and borgia luther still i see but never have i known perversity so great that feared not thunderbolt its host betraying twas not of my age such foul black treason that at once could petrify an old man on the threshold of his door and make the master waiting for his grave look like his statue ready for his tomb moors and castilians tell me who's this man he raises his eyes and looks round on the portraits on the wall oh you the silvers who can hear me now forgive if in your presence by my wrath thus stirred i say that hospitality was ill advised ernani rising duke silence he makes three steps into the hall looking at the portraits of the silvers sacred dead my ancestors ye men of steel who know what springs from heaven or hell reveal i say who is this man no not ernani he but judas is his name or try to speak and tell me who he is crossing his arms in all your days saw you aught like him no my lord don Rui gomez still addressing the portraits see you the shameless miscreant he would speak to me but better far than i you read his soul oh heed him not he is a knave he'd say that he foresaw that in the tempest wild of my great wrath i brooded o'er some deed of gory vengeance shameful to my roof a sister deed to that they call the feast of seven heads he'll tell you he's prescribed he'll tell you that that of silver they will talk even as of lara afterwards he'll say he is my guest in yours my lords my sires is the fault mine 
judge you between us now Rui gomez de silva if ever neath the heavens clear a noble brow was raised if ever heart was great and soul was high yours are my lord and oh my noble host i who now speak to you alone have sinned guilty most damnably am i without extenuating word to say i would have carried off thy bride dishonoured thee twas infamous i live but now my life i offer unto thee take it thy sword then wipe and think no more about the deed my lord twas not his fault strike only me be silent dona sol this hour supreme belongs alone to me nothing i have but it let me explain things to the duke o duke believe the last words from my mouth i swear that i alone am guilty but be calm and rest assured that she is pure that's all i guilty and she pure have faith in her a sword or dagger thrust for me then throw my body out of doors and have the flooring washed if you shall will it so what matter ah i only am the cause of all because i love him don Rui turns round trembling at these words and fixes on dona sol a terrible look she throws herself at his feet pardon yes my lord i love him love him you love him to ernani tremble noise of trumpets outside enter a page what is this noise it is the king my lord in person with a band complete of archers and his herald who now sounds oh god this last fatality the king the page to the duke he asks the reason why the door is closed and order gives to open it admit the king the page bows and exit he's lost don Rui gomez goes to one of the portraits that of himself and the last on the left he presses a spring and the portrait opens out like a door and reveals a hiding place in the wall he turns to ernani come hither sir my life to thee is forfeit and to gild it up i'm ready i thy prisoner am he enters the recess don Rui again presses the spring and the portrait springs back to its place looking as before my lord have pity on him the page entering his highness the king dona sol hurriedly lowers her veil the folding doors open enter don carlos in military attire followed by a crowd of gentlemen equally armed with halberds arquebuses and crossbows scene six don Rui gomez dona sol veiled don carlos and followers don carlos advances slowly his left hand on the hilt of his sword his right hand in his bosom and looking at the duke with anger and defiance the duke goes before the king and bows low silence expectation and terror on all at last the king coming opposite the duke throws back his head haughtily how comes it then my cousin that to-day thy door is strongly barred by all the saints i thought your dagger had more rusty grown and know not why when i'm your visitor it should so haste to brightly shine again all ready to your hand don Rui gomez attempts to speak but the king continues with an imperious gesture late in the day it is for you to play the young man's part do we come turbaned tell me are we named boabdil or mahomet and not charles that the portcullis gainst us you should lower and raise the drawbridge don Rui gomez bowing highness don carlos to his gentlemen take the keys and guard the doors two officers exeunt several others arrange the soldiers in a triple line in the hall from the king to the principal door don carlos turns again to the duke 
Ah, you would wake to life again these crushed rebellions. By my faith, if you, ye dukes, assume such airs as these, the king himself will play his kingly part, traverse the mountains in a warlike mode, and in their battlemented nests will slay the lordlings. Don Rui Gomez, drawing himself up. Ever have the silvers been, your highness, loyal? Without subterfuge, reply, or to the ground I'll raise thy towers eleven. Of extinguished fire remains one spark. Of brigands dead the chief survives. And who conceals him? It is thou, I say. Ernani, rebel ringleader, is here, and in thy castle thou dost hide him now. Highness, it is quite true. Well then, his head I want, or if not, thine. Dost understand, my cousin? Well then, be it so. You shall be satisfied. Dona Sol hides her face in her hands and sinks into the armchair. Ah, you repent. Go seek your prisoner. The duke crosses his arms, lowers his head, and remains some moments pondering. The king and Dona Sol, agitated by contrary emotions, observe him in silence. At last the duke looks up, goes to the king, takes his hand, and leads him with slow steps towards the oldest of the portraits, which is where the gallery commences to the right of the spectator. Don Rui Gomez, pointing out the old portrait to the king. This is the eldest one, the great forefather of the silver race. Don Silvius, our ancestor, three times was he made Roman consul. Passing to the next portrait. This is he, Don Galceran de Silva, other seed. They keep his body still at Toro, near Valladolid. A thousand candles burn before his gilded shrine. Twas he who freed Leon from tribute of the hundred virgins. Passing to another. Don Blas, who in contrition for the fault of having ill-advised the king, exiled himself of his own will. To another. This Cristobal at fight at escalon when fled on foot the king don sancho whose white plume was mark for general deadly aim he cried aloud o cristobal and cristobal assumed the plume and gave his horse to another this is don jorge who paid the ransom of ramire the king of aragon Don Carlos, crossing his arms and looking at him from head to foot. By heavens now, Don Rui, I marvel at you, but go on. Next comes Don Rui Gomez Silva. He was made Grand Master of St. James and Calatrava. His giant armour would not suit our heights. He took three hundred flags from foes and won in thirty battles. For the king Motril, he conquered Antequera, Suez, Nijar, and died in poverty. Highness, salute him. He bows, uncovers, and passes to another portrait. The king listens impatiently and with increasing anger. Next him is his son named gil dear to all noble souls his promise worth the oath of royal hands to another don gaspar this the pride alike of mendoque and silver your highness every noble family has some alliance with the silver race Sandobal has both trembled at and wed with us. Manrique is envious of us. Lara is jealous. Alencastre hates us. We all dukes surpass and mount to kings. Tut, tut, you're jesting. Here behold Don Vasquez, called the wise. 
don Hamy surnamed the strong one day alone he stopped zamet and five score moors i passed them by and some the greatest at an angry gesture of the king he passes by a great number of the portraits and speedily comes to the three last at the left of the audience this my grandfather who lived to sixty years keeping his promised word even to jews to the last portrait but one this venerable form my father is a sacred head great was he though he comes the last the moors had taken prisoner his friend count alvar giron but my sire set out to seek him with six hundred men to war inured a figure of the count cut out of stone by his decree was made and dragged along behind the soldiers he by patron saint declaring that until the count of stone itself turned back and fled he would not falter on he went and saved his friend i want my prisoner this was a gomez de silva imagine judge what in this dwelling one must say who sees these heroes instantly my prisoner don ruy gomez bows low before the king takes his hand and leads him to the last portrait which serves for the door of ernani's hiding-place dona sol watches him with anxious eyes silence and expectation in all this portrait my own mercy king charles for you require that those who see it here should say this last the worthy son of race heroic was a traitor found that sold the life of one he sheltered as a guest joy of dona sol movement of bewilderment in the crowd the king disconcerted moves away in anger and remains some moments with lips trembling and eyes flashing your castle duke annoys me i shall lay it low thus highness you'd retaliate is it not so for such audacity your towers i'll level with the ground and have upon the spot the hemp seed sown i'd see the hemp spring freely up where once my towers stood high rather than stain should eat into the ancient name of silver to the portraits is not true i ask it of you all now duke this head tis ours and thou hast promised it to me i promised one or other to the portraits was not so i ask you all pointing to his head this one i give to the king take it duke many thanks but twould not do the head i want is young when dead the headsman must uplift it by the hair but as for thine in vain he'd seek for thou hast not enough for him to clutch highness insult me not my head is noble still and worth far more than any rebel's pole the head of silver you thus despise give up ernani have spoken highness don carlos to his followers search you everywhere from roof to cellar that he takes not wing my keep is faithful as myself alone it shares the secret which we both shall guard right well i am the king out of my house demolished stone by stone they'll only make my tomb and nothing gain menace i find and prayer alike are vain deliver up the bandit duke or head and castle both will i beat down i've said my word well then instead of one head i'll have two to the duke d'alcala you jorge arrest the duke dona sol she plucks off her veil and throws herself between the king the duke and the guards king charles an evil king are you 
Good heavens, is it Doña Sol I see? Highness, thou hast no Spaniard's heart. Madam, you are severe upon the king. He approaches her and speaks low. Tis you have caused the wrath that's in my heart. A man approaching you perforce becomes an angel or a monster. Ah, when we are hated, swiftly we malignant grow. Perchance, if you had willed it so, young girl, I'd noble been. The lion of Castile. A tiger I am made by your disdain. You hear it roaring now. Madam, be still. Doña Sol looks at him. He bows. However, I'll obey. Turning to the duke. Cousin, maybe thy scruples are excusable, and I esteem thee. To thy guest be faithful still, and faithless to thy king. I pardon thee. Tis better that I only take thy niece away as hostage. Only? Highness, me? Yes, you. Alone? O oh, wondrous clemency! O oh, generous conqueror that spares the head to torture thus the heart! What mercy this! Choose twixt the traitor and the Doña Sol. I must have one of them. The master you! Don Carlos approaches Doña Sol to lead her away. She flies towards the duke. Save me, my lord! She pauses. Aside. Oh, misery! And yet it must be so. My uncle's life, or else the others. Rather mine. To the king. I follow you. Don Carlos aside. By all the saints, the thought triumphant is. Ah, in the end you'll soften, princess mine. Doña Sol goes with a grave and steady step to the casket, opens it, and takes from it the dagger, which she hides in her bosom. Don Carlos comes to her and offers his hand. What is it you're taking thence? Oh, nothing. Is it some precious jewel? Yes. Don Carlos, smiling. Show it to me. Anon you'll see it. She gives him her hand and prepares to follow him. Don Rui Gomez, who has remained motionless and absorbed in thought, advances a few steps, crying out. Heavens, Doña Sol! Oh, Doña Sol! Since he is merciless, help! Wars and armour come down on us now! He runs to the king. Leave me, my child! I have but her, O oh king! Don Carlos, dropping Doña Sol's hand. Then yield me up, my prisoner! The duke drops his head and seems to pray of horrible indecision. Then he looks up at the portraits with supplicating hands before them. Oh, now have pity on me, all of you! He makes a step towards the hiding place, Doña Sol watching him anxiously. He turns again to the portraits. Oh, hide your faces! They deter me! He advances with trembling steps towards his own portrait, then turns again to the king. Is your will? Yes. The duke raises a trembling hand towards the spring. Oh, God! No! He throws himself on his knees before the king. In pity take my life! Thy niece! Don Rui Gomez, rising. Take her, and leave me honour, then. Don Carlos, seizing the hand of the trembling Doña Sol. Adieu, Duke. Till we meet again. He watches the king, who retires slowly with Doña Sol. Afterwards, he puts his hand on his dagger. May God shield you. He comes back to the front of the stage, panting, and stands motionless, with vacant stare, seeming neither to see nor hear anything, his arms crossed on his heaving chest. Meanwhile the king goes out with Doña Sol, the suite following two by two according to their rank. They speak in a low voice among themselves. Don Rui Gomez aside. Whilst thou go joyous from my house, O king, my ancient loyalty goes forth, from out my bleeding heart. He raises his head, looks all round, and sees that he is alone. 
then he takes two swords from a panoply by the wall measures them and places them on a table this done he goes to the portrait touches the spring and the hidden door opens scene seven don Rui gomez hernani come out hernani appears at the door of the hiding place don Rui gomez points to the two swords on the table now choose choose for don carlos has departed now and it remains to give me satisfaction choose and be quick what then trembles thy hand a duel oh it cannot be old man twixt us why not is it thou art afraid or that thou art not noble so or not all men who injure me by hell i count noble enough to cross their swords with mine old man come forth young man to slay me else to be slain to die ah yes against my will thyself hast saved me and my life is yours i bid you take it this you wish to the portrait you see he wills it to ernani this is well thy prayer now make it is to thee my lord the last i make pray to the other lord no no to thee strike me old man dagger or sword each one for me is good but grant me first one joy supreme duke let me see her ere i die see her or at the least i beg that you will let me hear her voice once more only this one last time hear her ah well my lord i understand thy jealousy but death already seizes on my youth forgive me grant me tell me that without beholding her if it must be i yet may hear her speak and i will die to-night i'll grateful be to hear her but in peace i'd calmly die if thou wouldst deign that ere my soul is freed it sees once more the soul that shines so clearly in her eyes to her i will not speak thou shalt be there to see my father and canst slay me afterwards don Rui gomez pointing to the recess still open o oh, saints of heaven can this recess then be so deep and strong that he has nothing heard no i have nothing heard i was compelled to yield up dona sol or thee to whom the king madman he loves her loves her he he takes her from us he our rival is curses be on him vassals all to horse to horse let us pursue the ravisher listen the vengeance that is sure of foot makes on its way less noise than this would do to thee i do belong thou hast the right to slay me wilt thou not employ me first as the avenger of thy niece's wrongs let me take part in this thy vengeance do grant me this boon and i will kiss thy feet if so must be let us together speed the king to follow i will be thine arm i will avenge thee duke and afterwards the life that's forfeit thou shalt take and then as now thou'lt be ready to die yes duke by what wilt thou swear this my father's head of thine own self wilt thou remember it Ernani giving him the horn which he takes from his girdle listen take you this horn and whatsoe'er you may happen what the place or what the hour whatever to thy mind it seems the time has come for me to die 
blow on this horn and take no other care all will be done don Rui gomez offering his hand your hand they press hands to the portraits and all of you are witnesses end of act three Act four of Erna Nie by Victor Hugo. Translated by Mrs. Newton Crosland. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Fourth Act The Tomb. Aix la Chapelle. Scene one. The vaults which enclose the tomb of Charlemagne at Aix la Chapelle. Great arches of Lombard architecture with semicircular columns having capitals of birds and flowers at the right a small bronze door low and curved a single lamp suspended from the crown of the vault shows the inscription carolus magnus it is night one cannot see the end of the vaults the eye loses itself in the intricacy of arches steps and columns which mingle in the shade don carlos don ricardo de rojas comte de casa palma lanterns in hand and wearing large cloaks and slouched hats don ricardo hat in hand this is the place yes here it is the league will meet they that together in my power so soon shall be oh it was well my lord of treves the elector it was well of you to lend this place dark plots should prosper best in the dank air of catacombs and good it is to sharpen daggers upon tombs yet the stakes heavy heads are on the game ye bold assassins and the end we'll see by heaven twas well a sepulchre to choose for such a business since the road will be shorter for them to traverse to don ricardo tell me now how far the subterranean way extends to the strong fortress farther than we need and on the other side it reaches quite the monastery of altenheim ah where well, lothair was overcome by rodolph once again count tell me o oh, their names and wrongs gotha ah oh, very well i know why tis the brave duke his conspirator he wills for germany a german emperor hohenberg hohenberg would better like with francis hell than heaven itself with me gil telles giron castile and our lady the scoundrel to be traitor to his king one evening it is said that you were found with madame giron you had just before made him a baron he revenges now the honour of his dear companion this then the reason he revolts against spain what name comes next the reverend vasquez avila's bishop pray does he resent dishonour of his wife then there is named guzman de lara who is discontent claiming the collar of your order ah guzman de lara if he only wants a collar he shall have one next the duke of lutzenberg as for his plans they say ah lutzenberg is by the head too tall one de aro who astorga wants these haros always they the headsman's pay have doubled that is all not by my count these make but seven oh i did not name some bandits probably engaged by treves or france men without prejudice of course whose ready daggers turn to heaviest pay as truly as the needle to the pole however i observed two sturdy ones among them both newcomers one was young the other old their names don ricardo shrugs his shoulders in sign of ignorance their age then say the younger may be twenty pity then the elder must be sixty quite one seems too young the other over old so much for them the worse twill be i will take care myself will help the headsman be their need my sword is sharpened for a traitor's block 
I'll lend it him if blunt his axe should grow, And join my own imperial purple on to piece the scaffold cloth, If it must be enlarged that way. But shall I emperor prove? The college at this hour deliberates. Who knows? Francis the first, perchance, they'll name, Or else their Saxon Frederick the wise. And, Luther, thou art right to blame the times, And scorn such makers up of royalty, That own no other rights than gilded ones. A Saxon heretic, primate of Treves, a libertine, Count Palatine a fool, as for Bohemia's king, For me he is. Princes of Hesse, all smaller than their states, the young are idiots, and the old debauched. Of crowns are plenty, but for heads we search in vain. Council of dwarfs ridiculous, that I in lion skin could carry off like Hercules, and who of violet robes bereft would show but heads more shallow far than Tribulae's. Seest thou, I want three votes, or all is lost, Ricardo. Oh, I'd give Toledo, Ghent, and Salamanca too. Three towns, my friend, I'd offer to their choice for their three voices, cities of Castile and Flanders, safe, I know, to take them back a little later on. Don Ricardo bows low to the king and puts on his hat. You cover, sir. Sire, you have called me thou. Bowing again. And thus I made Grande of Spain. Don Carlos aside. Ah, how to pity a scorn you rouse me, Interested brood devoured by mean ambition. Thus across my plans yours struggle. Base the court where without shame The king has plied for honours, And he yields, bestowing grandeur On the hungry crew. Musing. God only, and the emperor are great, Also the holy father. For the rest, the king and dukes of what account are they? I trust that they, your highness, will elect. Highness? Still highness? Oh, unlucky chance, if only king I must remain. Don Ricardo aside. By Jove, emperor our king, grandee of Spain, I am. When they've decided who shall be the one they choose for emperor of Germany, what sign is to announce his name? The guns. A single firing will proclaim the Duke of Saxony is chosen emperor. Two, if tis Francis. For your highness, three. And don your soul, I'm crossed on every side. If count by turn of luck I'm emperor made, go seek her. She by Caesar might be won. Don Ricardo, smiling. Your highness pleases. On that subject, peace. I have not yet inquired what's thought of me. But tell me, when will it be truly known who is elected? In an hour or so, at latest. Ah, three votes, and only three. But first this traitorous rabble we must crush, and then we'll see to whom the empire falls. He counts on his fingers and stamps his foot. Always by three too few. Ah, they hold power. Yet did Cornelius know all long ago. In heaven's ocean thirteen stars he saw, Coming full sail towards mine, all from the north. Empire for me. Let's on. But it is said, on other hand, That Jean Trithem Francis predicted. Clearer should I see my fate, Had I some armament the prophecy to help. The sorcerer's predictions come most true When a good army, with its guns and lances, Horse and foot, and martial strains, ready to lead the way where fate alone might stumble, plays the midwife's part to bring fulfilment of prediction. That's worth more than our Cornelius Agrippa or Trithem. He who by force of arms expounds his system, and with sharpened point of lance can edge his words, and uses soldiers' swords to level rugged fortune shapes events at his own will to match the prophecy. Poor fools, who with proud eyes and haughty mien only look straight to empire and declare it is my right. They need great guns in files whose burning breath melts towns, 
and soldiers, ships, and horsemen. These they need their ends to gain over trampled peoples. <laughs> At the crossroads of human life, where one leads to a throne, another to perdition, they will pause in indecision. Scarce three steps will take uncertain of themselves, and in their doubt fly to the necromancer for advice which road to take. To Don Ricardo. Go now. Tis near the time the traitorous crew will meet. Give me the key. Don Ricardo giving key of tomb. Sire, twas the guardian of the tomb, the Count de Limburg, who to me confided it, and has done everything to pleasure you. Do all, quite all that I commanded you. Don Ricardo, bowing. Highness, I go at once. The signal, then, that I await is cannon firing thrice? Don Ricardo bows and exit. Don Carlos falls into a deep reverie, his arms crossed, his head drooping. Afterwards he raises it and turns to the tomb. Scene 2. Don Carlos alone. Forgive me, Charlemagne. Oh, this lonely vault should echo only unto solemn words. Thou must be angry at the babble vein of our ambition at your monument. Here Charlemagne rests. How can the sombre tomb without a rifting spasm hold such dust? And art thou truly here, colossal power, creator of the world? And canst thou now crouch down from all thy majesty and might? Ah, tis a spectacle to stir the soul, what Europe was, and what by thee t'was made. Mighty construction, with two men, supreme elected chiefs, to whom born kings submit. States, duchies, kingdoms, marquisates, and fiefs. By right hereditary most are ruled, but nations find a friend sometimes in Pope or Caesar, and one chance another chance corrects. Thus even balance is maintained and order opens out. The cloth of gold electors and the scarlet cardinals, the double sacred senate unto which earth bends are but paraded outward show god's fiat rules it all one day he wills a thought a want should burst upon the world then grow and spread and mix with everything possess some man win hearts and delve a groove though kings may trample on it and may seek to gag only that they some morn may see at diet conclave this the scorned idea that they had spurned all suddenly expand and soar above their heads bearing the globe in hand or on the brow tiara pope and emperor they on earth are all in all a mystery supreme dwells in them both and heaven's might which they still represent feasts them with kings and nations holding them beneath its thunder-cloud, the while they sit at table with the world served out for food. Alone they regulate all things on earth, just as the mower manages his field. All rule and power are theirs. Kings at the door inhale the odour of their savoury meats, look through the window, watchful on tiptoe but weary of the scene. The common world below them groups itself on ladder rungs, they make and all unmake. One can release, the other surely strike. The one is truth, the other might. Each to himself is law, and is because he is. When equals they the one in purple, and the other swathed in white like winding sheet. When they come out from sanctuary, the dazzled multitude look with wild terror on these halves of God, the Pope and emperor emperor oh to be thus great oh anguish not to be this power when beats the heart with dauntless courage filled oh happy he who sleeps within this tomb how great and oh how fitted for his time the pope and emperor were more than men in them two rooms in mystic hymen join prolific were giving new form and soul unto the human race refounding realms and nations 
shaping thus a Europe new, and both remoulding with their hands the bronze remaining of the great old Roman world. What destiny! And yet tis here he lies. Is all so little that we come to this? What then? To have been prince and emperor and king, to have been sword and also law, giant with Germany for pedestal, for title Caesar, Charlemagne for name, a greater to have been than Hannibal or Attila, as great as was the world, yet all rests here, for emperors strive and strain and see the dust that makes an emperor. Cover the earth with tumult and with noise, know you that one day only will remain, O oh, maddening thought, a stone. For sounding name triumphant, but some letters graved to serve for little children to learn spelling by. How high so e'er ambition made thee soar! Behold the end of all. O oh, empire, power, what matters all to me? I near it now, and like it well. Some voice declares to me, thine, thine, it will be thine. Heavens, were it so, to mount at once the spiral height supreme and be alone, the keystone of the arch, with states beneath, one o'er the other ranged, and kings for mats to wipe one's sandaled feet, to see neath kings the feudal families, margraves and cardinals, and doges, dukes, then bishops, abbés, chiefs of ancient clans, great barons, then the soldier class, and clerks, and no yet farther off, in the deep shade at the bottom of the abyss there is mankind, that is to say a crowd, a sea of men, a tumult, cries with tears and bitter laugh sometimes. The wail wakes up and scares the earth, and reaches us with leaping echoes and with trumpet tone. O citizens, O men, the swarm that from the high church towers seems now to sound the tocsin. Musing. Wondrous human base of nations, bearing on your shoulders broad the mighty pyramid that has two poles, the living waves that ever straining hard balance and shake it as they heave and roll, make all change place, and on the highest heights make stagger thrones, as if they were but stools. So sure is this, that ceasing vain debates, kings look to heaven. Kings look down below, look at the people. Restless ocean, there where nothing's cast that does not shake the whole, the sea that rends a throne and rocks a tomb, a glass in which kings rarely look but ill. Ah, if upon this gloomy sea they gazed sometimes, what empires in its depths they'd find! Great vessels wrecked that by its ebb and flow are stirred, that wearied it, no now no more. To govern this, to mount so high if called, yet know myself to be but mortal man. To see the abyss, if not that moment struck with dizziness, bewildering every sense. O oh, moving pyramid of states and kings, with apex narrow, woe to timid step! What shall restrain me, if I fail, when they're feeling my feet upon the trembling world, feeling alive the palpitating earth, then, when I've between my hands the globe, have I the strength alone to hold it fast, to be an emperor? O oh God, t'was hard and difficult to play the kingly part. Certes, no man is rarer than the one who can enlarge his soul to duly meet great fortune's smiles and still increasing gifts. But I, who is it that shall be my guide, my counsellor, and make me great? Falls on his knees before the tomb. Tis thou, O Charlemagne! And since tis God for whom all obstacles dissolve, who takes us now and puts us face to face from this tomb's depths, endow me with sublimity and strength. Let me be great enough to see the truth on every side. Show me how small the world I dare not measure. Me, this Babel, 
show where from the hind to caesar's mounting up each one complacent with himself regards the next with scorn that is but half restrained teach me the secret of thy conquests all and how to rule and show me certainly whether to punish or to pardon be the worthier thing to do is it not fact that in his solitary bed sometimes a mighty shade is wakened from his sleep aroused by noise and turbulence on earth that suddenly his tomb expands itself and bursts its doors and in the night flings forth a flood of light if this be true indeed say emperor what can after charlemagne another do speak though thy sovereign breath should cleave this brazen door or rather now let me thy sanctuary enter alone let me behold thy veritable face and not repulse me with a freezing breath upon thy stony pillar elbows lean and let us talk yes with prophetic voice tell me of things which make the forehead pale and clear eyes mournful speak and do not blind thine awestruck son for doubtlessly thy tomb is full of light or if thou wilt not speak let me make study in the solemn peace of thee as of a world thy measure take o giant for there's nothing here below so great as thy poor ashes let them teach failing thy spirit he puts the key in the lock let us enter now he recoils o god if he should really whisper me if he be there and walks with noiseless tread and i come back with hair in moments bleached i'll do it still sound of footsteps who comes who dares disturb besides myself the dwelling of such dead the sound comes nearer my murderers i forgot now enter we he opens the door of the tomb which shuts upon him enter several men walking softly disguised by large cloaks and hats scene three the conspirators they take each other's hands going from one to another and speaking in a low tone first conspirator who alone carries a lighted torch ad augusta peragusta the saint shield us the dead assist us guard us god noise in the shade who's there ad augusta peragusta enter fresh conspirators noise of footsteps first conspirator to third see there is some one still to come who's there ad augusta perangusta enter more conspirators who exchange signs with their hands with the others tis well all now are here gotter to you it falls to state the case friends darkness waits for light the conspirators sit in a half circle on the tombs the first conspirator passes before them and from his torch each one lights a wax taper which he holds in his hand then the first conspirator seats himself in silence on a tomb a little higher than the others in the centre of the circle duke of gotha rising my friends this charles of spain by mother's side a foreigner aspires to mount the throne of holy empire but for him the grave duke of gotha throwing down his light and crushing it with his foot let it be with his head as with this flame so be it death unto him let him die let, let him, him be slain. slain german his father was his mother spanish thus you see that he is no more one than the other let him die suppose the electors at this very hour declare him emperor him oh never him what signifies let us strike off the head the crown will fall but if to him belongs the holy empire he becomes so great and so august that only god's own hand can reach him all the better reason why he dies before such power august he gains he shall not be elected not, not for him the empire. empire now 
How many hands will it take to put him in his shroud? One, One is enough. enough. How many strokes to reach his heart? But one. Who then will strike? All, all. The victim is a traitor proved. They would an emperor choose. We've a high priest to make. Let us draw lots. All the conspirators write their names on their tablets, tear out the leaf, roll it up, and one after another throw them into the urn on one of the tombs. Afterwards, the first conspirator says, Now, let us pray. All kneel. The first conspirator rises and says, Oh, may the chosen one believe in God and like a Roman strike, die as a Hebrew would and braver like. The wheel and burning pincers laugh at wreck and fire and wooden horse and be resigned to kill and die he might have all to do he draws a parchment from the urn what name ernani ernani coming out from the crowd of conspirators i have one yes one i hold thee fast thee i have so long pursued with a vengeance don rui gomez piercing through the crowd and taking Ernani aside. Yield, O oh, yield this right to me. Not for my life, O oh, senor, grudge me not this stroke of fortune. Tis the first I've known. You nothing have. I'll give you houses, lands. A hundred thousand vassals shall be yours in my three hundred villages if you but yield the right to strike to me. No, no. <laughs> Old man, thy arm would strike less sure a blow. Back. I have strength of soul, if not of arm. Judge not the sword by the mere scabbard's rust. To Ernani you do belong to me my life is yours as his belongs to me don rui gomez drawing the horn from his girdle i yield her up and will return the horn Anani trembles what life my life and dona's soul no i my vengeance choose I have my father to revenge, yet more. Perchance I am inspired by God in this. I yield thee her, and give thee back the horn. No. Boy, reflect. Oh, Duke, leave me my prey. My curses on you for depriving me of this my joy. First Conspirator to Ernani. O oh, brother, ere they can elect him, t'would be well this very night to watch for Charles. Fear not, I know the way to kill a man. May every treason fall on traitor, and may God be with you now. We, counts and barons, let us take the oath that if he fall, yet slay not we go on and strike by turn unflinching till charles dies all drawing their swords let, let us, us all swear. swear duke of gotha to first conspirator my brother let's decide on what we swear don rui gomez taking his sword by the point and raising it above his head by this same cross all raising their swords. And this, that he must quickly die impenitent. They hear a cannon fired afar off. All pause and are silent. The door of the tomb half opens, and Don Carlos appears at the threshold. A second gun is fired, then a third. He opens wide the door and stands erect and motionless without advancing. Scene 4. The Conspirators and Don Carlos. Afterwards, Don Ricardo, signors, guards, 
the king of bohemia the duke of bavaria afterwards dona sol fall back ye gentlemen the emperor hears all the lights are simultaneously extinguished a profound silence don carlos advances a step in the darkness so dense that the silent motionless conspirators can scarcely be distinguished silence and night from darkness sprung the swarm into the darkness plunges back again think ye this scene is like a passing dream and that i take you now your lights are quenched for men's stone figures seated on their tombs just now my statues you had voices loud raise then your drooping heads for charles v is here strike move a pace or two and show you dare but no tis not in you to dare your flaming torches blood red neath these vaults my breath extinguished but now turn your eyes irresolute and see that if i thus put out the many i can light still more he strikes the iron key on the bronze door of the tomb at the sound all the depths of the cavern are filled with soldiers bearing torches and halberds at their head the duke d'alcala the marquis d'almunian etc come on my falcons i've the nest the prey two conspirators i can make blaze of light tis my turn now behold to the soldiers advance for flagrant is the crime ernani looking at the soldiers ah well at first i thought twas charlemagne alone he seemed so great but after all tis only charles the fifth don carlos to the duke d'alcala come constable of spain to marquis d'almunian and you castilian admiral disarm them all the conspirators are surrounded and disarmed don ricardo hurrying in and bowing almost to the ground your majesty alcade i make you of the palace don ricardo again bowing two electors to represent the golden chamber come to offer to your sacred majesty congratulations now let them come forth aside to don ricardo the dona sol ricardo bows and exit enter with flambeau and flourish of trumpets the king of bohemia and the duke of bavaria both wearing cloth of gold and with crowns on their heads numerous followers german nobles carrying the banner of the empire the double-headed eagle with the escutcheon of spain in the middle of it the soldiers divide forming lines between which the electors pass to the emperor to whom they bow low he returns the salutation by raising his hat most sacred majesty charles of the romans king and emperor the empire of the world is in your hands yours is the throne to which each king aspires the saxon frederick was elected first but he judged you more worthy and declined now then receive the crown and globe o king the holy empire doth invest you now arms with the sword and you indeed are great the college i will thank on my return but go my brother of bohemia and you bavarian cousin thanks but now i do dismiss you i shall go myself oh charles our ancestors were friends my sire loved yours and their two fathers were two friends so young exposed to various fortunes say oh charles may i be ranked a very chief among thy brothers i cannot forget i knew you as a little child ah well king of bohemia you presume too much he gives him his hand to kiss also the duke of bavaria both bow low depart exeunt the two electors with their followers long live the emperor don carlos aside so tis mine all things have helped and i am emperor by the refusal though of frederick surnamed the wise Enter Dona Sol, led by Ricardo. What? Soldiers! Emperor! Ernani! Heavens! What an unlooked-for chance! 
Ah, Dona Sol. Don Rui Gomez, aside to Ernani. She has not seen me. Dona Sol runs to Ernani, who makes her recoil by a look of disdain. Madam. Dona Sol, drawing the dagger from her bosom. I still his poignard have. Ernani, taking her in his arms. My dearest one. Be silent, all. To the conspirators. Is it you remorseless are? I need to give the world a lesson now. The Lara of Castile and Gotha, you of Saxony, all, all. What were your plans just now? I bid you speak. Quite simple, sire. The thing, and we can briefly tell it you. We grave the sentence on Belshazzar's wall. He takes out a poniard and brandishes it. We render unto Caesar Caesar's due. Silence! To Don Rui Gomez. And you, you too a traitor, Silva. Which of us two is traitor, sire? Ernani, turning towards the conspirators. Our heads and empire. All that he desires, he has. To the emperor. The mantle blue of kings encumbered you. The purple better suits. It shows not blood. Don Carlos to Don Rui Gomez. Cousin of Silva, this is felony, attaining your baronial rank. Think well, Don Rui. High treason. Kings like Roderick count Julian's make. Don Carlos to the Duke d'Alcala. Seize only those who seem the nobles, for the rest. Don Rui Gomez, the Duke de Lützelburg, the Duke of Gotha, Don Juan de Haro, Don Guzman de Lara, Don Teles Giron, the Baron of Hohenburg, separate themselves from the group of conspirators, among whom is Ernani. The Duke d'Alcala surrounds them with guards. Dona Sol aside. Oh, he is saved. Ernani, coming from among the conspirators. I claim to be included. To Don Carlos. Since to this it comes, the question of the axe, that now, Ernani, humble churl, beneath thy feet, unpunished goes, because his brow is not at level with thy sword, because one must be great to die, I rise. God who gives power, and gives to thee the sceptre, made me duke of Segorbe and Cardona, Marquis too of Monroy, Albatera's count of Gore v. Count, and lord of many places, more than I can name, Juan of Aragon, am I, Grand Master of Avi, the son in exile born, of murdered father slain, by king's decree, king charles which me proscribed thus death twixt us is family affair you have the scaffold we the poignard hold since heaven a duke has made me and exile a mountaineer since all in vain i've sharpened upon the hills my sword and in the torrents have tempered it he puts on his head to the conspirators let us be covered now us the grandees of spain they cover to don carlos our heads o oh, king have right to fall before thee covered thus to the prisoners silva and haro lara men of rank and race make room for juan of aragon give me my place ye dukes and counts my place to the courtiers and guards king headsman varlets juan of aragon am i if all your scaffolds are too small make new ones he joins the group of nobles heavens i had quite forgotten this history but they who bleed remember far better the evil that wrongdoer thus so senselessly forgets forever stirs within the outraged heart therefore enough for me to bear this title that i'm son of sires 
whose power dealt death to ancestors of yours Dona Sol falling on her knees before the emperor oh pardon pardon mercy sire be pitiful or strike us both i pray for he is my lover my promised spouse in him it is alone i live i breathe o oh, sire in mercy us together slay trembling o oh, majesty i trail myself before your sacred knees i love him sire and he is mine as empire is your own have pity don carlos looks at her without moving oh what thought absorbs you cease rise duchess of segobe marchioness of monroy countess albatera and to ernani thine other names don juan who speaks thus the king no tis the emperor just heaven don carlos pointing to her duke juan take your wife ernani his eyes raised to heaven dona sol in his arms just god don carlos to don rui gomez my cousin i know the pride of your nobility but aragon with silver well may mate tis not a question of nobility ernani looking with love on dona sol and still holding her in his arms my deadly hate is vanishing away throws away his dagger don rui gomez aside and looking at them shall i betray myself oh no my grief my foolish love would make them pity cast upon my venerable head old man and spaniard let the hidden fire consume and suffer still in secret let heart break but cry not they would laugh at thee dona sol still in ernani's arms my duke nothing my soul holds now but love oh joy don carlos aside his hand in his bosom stifle thyself young heart so full of flame let reign again the better thoughts which thou so long hast troubled henceforth let thy loves thy mistresses alas be germany and flanders spain looking at the banner the emperor is like the eagle his companion in the place of heart there's but a scutcheon caesar you don juan of your ancient name and race your soul is worthy pointing to dona sol worthy even of her kneel duke ernani kneels don carlos unfastens his own golden fleece and puts it on ernani's neck receive this collar don carlos draws his sword and strikes him three times on the shoulder faithful be for by saint stephen now i make thee knight he raises and embraces him thou hast a collar softer and more choice that which is wanting to my rank supreme the arms of loving woman loved by thee thou wilt be happy i am emperor to conspirators sirs i forget your names anger and hate i will forget go go i pardon you this is the lesson that the world much needs glory, glory to charles. charles don rui gomez to don carlos i only suffer then and i but i have not like majesty forgiven who wist has worked this wondrous change on to charles v and to germany don carlos turning to the tomb honour to charlemagne leave us now together exeunt all scene five don carlos alone he bends towards the tomb art thou content with me o charlemagne have i the kingship's littleness stripped off become as emperor another man can i rome's mitre add unto my helm have i the right 
the fortunes of the world to sway have i a steady foot that safe can tread the path by vandal ruins strewed which thou hast beaten by thine armies vast have i my candle lighted at thy flame did i interpret right the voice that spake within this tomb ah i was lost alone before an empire a wide howling world that threatened and conspired there were the danes to punish and the holy father's self to compensate with venice solomon francis and luther and a thousand dirks gleaming already in the shade snares rocks and countless foes a score of nations each of which might serve to awe a score of kings things ripe all pressing to be done at once i cried to thee with what shall i begin and thou didst answer son by clemency end of act four Act five of Ernani by Victor Hugo translated by Mrs. Newton Crossland. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Fifth Act The Nuptials Scene one Saragossa A Terrace of the Palace of Aragon At the back a flight of steps leading to the garden. At the right and left doors on to a terrace which shows at the back of the stage a balustrade surmounted by a double row of moorish arches above and through which are seen the palace gardens fountains in the shade shrubberies and moving lights and the gothic and arabic arches of the palace illuminated it is night trumpets afar off are heard masks and dominoes either singly or in groups cross the terrace here and there at the front of the stage a group of young lords their masks in their hands laugh and chat noisily don sancho sanchez de zuniga comte de monterey don matias centurion marquis d'almunian don ricardo de rojas comte de casa palma don francisco de sotomayor comte de valalcazar don garcia suarez de carvajal comte de penalver now to the bride long life and joy i say don matias looking to the balcony all sargossa at its windows shows and they do well a torchlight wedding ne'er was seen more gay than this nor lovelier knight nor handsomer married pair kind emperor when we went with him in the dark that night seeking adventure marquis who'd have thought how it would end i too was there to the others now list three gallants one a bandit his head due unto the scaffold then a duke a king adoring the same woman all laid siege at the same time the onset made who won it was the bandit nothing strange in that for love and fortune in all other lands as well as spain are sport of the cogged dice it is the rogue who wins my fortune grew in seeing the love-making first a count and then a grande and next an alcalde at court my time was well spent though without one knowing it your secret sir appears to be the keeping close upon the heels of the king and showing that my conduct's worth reward and by a chance you profited what has become of the old duke has he his coffin ordered marquis jest not thus at him for he a haughty spirit has and this old man loved well the doña sol his sixty years had turned his hair to grey one day has bleached it not again they say has he been seen in saragossa well wouldst thou that to the bridal he should bring his coffin what's the emperor doing now the emperor is out of sorts just now luther annoys him luther subject fine for care and fear soon would i finish him with but four men-at-arms and solomon makes him dejected luther 
Solomon, Neptune, the devil, Jupiter, what are they all to me? The women are most fair, the masquerade is splendid, and I've said a hundred foolish things. Behold you now the chief thing. Garcy's not far wrong, I say. Not the same man am I on festal days. When I put on the mask in truth, I think another head it gives me. Don Sancho apart to Don Matias. Pity tis that all days are not festivals. Are those their rooms? Don Garcia, with a nod of his head. Arrive they will, no doubt, full soon. Dost think so? Most undoubtedly. Tis well. The bride is lovely. What an emperor! The rebel chief Ernane will be pardoned, wearing the golden fleece, and married too. Ah, if the emperor had been by me advised, the gallant should have had a bed of stone, the lady one of down. Don Sancho, aside to Don Matias. How well I'd like with my good sword this lord to smash, a lord made up of tinsel coarsely joined, poor point of count filled out with bailiff's soul. Don Ricardo drawing near. What are you saying? Don Matias aside to Don Sancho. Count, no quarrel here. To Don Ricardo. He was reciting one of Petrarch's sonnets unto his lady love. Have you not seen, among the flowers and women, and dresses gay, of many hues, a figure, spectre-like, whose domino all black, upright against, a balustrade, seems like a spot upon the festival? Yes, by my faith. Who is't? By height and mien, I judge it must be the admiral. The Don Prancasio. Oh, no. He has not taken off his mask. There is no need. It is the Duke de Soma who likes to be observed. Tis nothing more. No, the Duke spoke to me. Who then can be this mask? But see, he's here. Enter a black domino, who slowly crosses the back of the stage. All turn and watch him, without his appearing to notice them. If the dead walk, that is their step. Don Garcia, approaching the black domino. Most noble mask. The black domino stops and turns. Garcia recoils. I swear, good sirs, that I saw flame shine in his eyes. If he's the devil, he'll find one he can address. He goes to the black domino, who is still motionless. Ho, demon! Comest thou from hell? I come not thence. Tis thither that I go. He continues his walk and disappears at the balustrade of the staircase. All watch him with a look of horrified dismay. Sepulchral is his voice, as can be heard. Pshaw, what would frighten elsewhere at a ball we laugh at? Silly jesting tis. Indeed, if Lucifer is come to see us dance, waiting for lower regions, let us dance. Of course, it's some buffoonery. We'll know tomorrow. Don Sancho to Don Matias. Look now what becomes of him, I pray you. Don Matias at the balustrade of the terrace. Down the steps he's gone, that's all. A pleasant jester he. Musing. Tis strange. Don Garcia to a lady passing. Marquise, let us pray dance this time. He bows and offers his hand. You know, dear sir, my husband will my dances with you all count up. All the more reason. Pleased is he to count, it seems, and it amuses him. He calculates we dance. The lady gives her hand, and they exeunt. Don Sancho, thoughtfully. In truth, tis strange. Behold the married pair. Now silence, all. Enter Ernani and Dona Sol, hand in hand. Dona Sol in magnificent bridal dress. Ernani in black velvet and with the golden fleece hanging from his neck. Behind them a crowd of masks and of ladies and gentlemen, 
who form their retinue two halberdiers in rich liveries follow them and four pages precede them every one makes way for them and bows as they approach flourish of trumpets scene two the same ernani dona sol and retinue ernani saluting dear friends don ricardo advancing and bowing your excellency's happiness makes ours don francisco looking at dona sol now by james tis venus's self that he is leading happiness is his don sancho to don matias tis late now let us leave all salute the married pair and retire some by the door others by the stairway at the back ernani escorting them adieu don sancho who has remained to the last and pressing his hand be happy exit don sancho ernani and dona sol remain alone the sound of voices grows fainter and fainter till it ceases altogether during the early part of the following scene the sound of trumpets grows fainter and the lights by degrees are extinguished till night and silence prevail scene three ernani dona sol at last they are all gone ernani seeking to draw her to his arms dear love dona sol drawing back a little is it late at least to me it seems so angel dear time ever drags till we together are this noise has wearied me is it not true dear lord that all this mirth but stifling is to happiness thou sayest truly love for happiness is serious and asks for hearts of bronze on which to grave itself pleasure alarms it flinging it to flowers its smile is nearer tears than mirth thy smiles like daylight in thine eyes ernani seeks to lead her to the door oh presently i am thy slave yes linger if thou wilt whate'er thou dost as well i'll laugh and sing if thou desirest that it should be so bid the volcano stifle flame and twill close up its gulfs and on its sides grow flowers and grasses green how good you are to me my heart's ernani madame what name's that i pray in pity speak it not again thou cost to mind forgotten things i know that he existed formerly in dreams ernani he whose eyes flashed like a sword a man of night and of the hills a man proscribed on whom was seen writ everywhere the one word of vengeance an unhappy man that drew down malediction i know not the man they called ernani as for me i love the birds and flowers and woods and song of nightingale i'm one of aragon the spouse of dona sol a happy man happy am i what does it matter now the rags i left behind me at the door behold i to my palace desolate come back upon the threshold still there waits for me an angel i come in and lift upright the broken columns kindle fire and ope again the windows and the grass upon the courtyard i have all plucked up for me there is but joy enchantment love let them give back my towers and donjon keep my plume and seat at the castilian board of council comes my blushing dona sol let them leave us the rest forgotten is neither i've seen nor said nor have i done anew my life begins the past facing wisdom or madness you i have and love and you are all my joy how well upon the velvet black the golden collar shows you saw it on the king ere now on me i did not notice others what are they to me 
Besides, the velvet is it, or the satin? No, my duke, it is thy neck which suits the golden collar. Thou art proud and noble, my own lord. He seeks to lead her indoors. Oh, presently, a moment. See you not, I weep with joy. Come, look upon the lovely night. She goes to the balustrade. My duke, only a moment, but the time to breathe and gaze. All now is over. The torch is out. The music done. Night only is with us. Felicity most perfect. Think not that now, while all is still and slumbering, nature, half waking, watches us with love. No cloud in the sky. All things like us are now at rest. Come, breathe with me the air perfumed by roses. Look, there is no light, nor hear we any noise. Silence prevails. The moon just now from the horizon rose, even when you spoke to me. Her trembling light and thy dear voice together reached my heart. Joyous and softly calm I felt. Oh, thou, my lover! And it seemed that I would then most willingly have died. Ah, who is there would not all things forget when listening thus unto this voice celestial? Thy speech but seems a chaunt with nothing human mixed, and as with one who gliding down a stream on summer eve sees pass before his eyes a thousand flowery plains, my thoughts are drawn into thy reveries. The silence is too deep and too profound the calm. Say now, wouldst thou not like to see a star shine forth from out of the depths? or hear a voice of night tender and sweet raise suddenly its song Anani smiling capricious one just now you fled away from all the songs and lights ah yes the ball and yet a bird that in the meadow sings a nightingale in moss or shadow lost or flute far off for music sweet can pour into the soul a harmony divine that like a heavenly choir wakes in the heart a thousand voices. Charming would it be. They hear the sound of a horn from the shade. My prayer is heard. Anani aside, trembling. Oh, miserable man. An angel read my thought. Twas thy good angel, doubtless. Yes, my good angel. Aside. There again. Dona Sol smiling. Don Juan, I recognize your horn. Is so? The half this serenade to you belongs. The half? Thou hast declared it? Ah, oh, the ball, detestable. Far better do I love the horn that sounds from out of the woods. And since it is your horn, tis like your voice to me. The horn sounds again. Anani aside. It is the tiger howling for his prey. Don Juan, this music fills my heart with joy. Ernani drawing himself up and looking terrible. Call me Ernani, call me it again, for with that fatal name I have not done. Dona Sol, trembling. What ails you? The old man. Oh God, what looks? What is it ails you? That old man who in the darkness laughs. Can you not see him there? Oh, you are wandering. Who is this old man? The old man. On my knees I do entreat thee. Say what is the secret that afflicts thee thus? I swore it. Swore? She watches his movements with anxiety. He stops suddenly and passes his hand across his brow. Ernani aside. What have I said? Oh, let me spare her. Aloud. I not. What was it I said? You said. No, no, I was disturbed. And somewhat suffering I am. Do not be frightened. You need something. Order me, thy servant. The horn sounds again. Ernani aside. Ah, he claims. He claims the pledge. 
he has my oath feeling for his dagger not there it must be done ah sufferest thou so much tis an old wound that i thought healed it has reopened now aside she must be got away aloud my best beloved now listen there's a little box that in less happy days i carried with me ah oh, i know what tis you mean tell me your wish it holds a flask of an elixir which will end my sufferings go i go my lord exit by the door to their apartments scene four ernani alone this then how my happiness must end behold the fatal finger that doth shine upon the wall my bitter destiny still jests at me he falls into a profound yet convulsive reverie afterwards he turns abruptly ah well i hear no sound am i myself deceiving the mask in black domino appears at the balustrade of the steps ernani stops petrified scene five ernani the mask whatsoe'er may happen what the place or what the hour whenever to thy mind it seems the time has come for me to die blow on this horn and take no other care all will be done this compact has the dead for witnesses is all done tis he unto thy home i come i tell thee that it is the time it is my hour i find thee hesitate well then thy pleasure say but wouldst thou of me i give thee choice twixt poison draught and blade i bear about me both we shall depart together be it so shall we first pray what matter which of them wilt thou the poison then hold out your hand he gives a vial to ernani who pales at receiving it now drink that i may finish ernani lifts the vial to his lips but recoils oh for pity's sake until to-morrow wait if thou hast heart or soul if thou art not a spectre just escaped from flame if thou art not a soul accursed for ever lost if on thy brow not yet has god inscribed his never oh if thou hast ever known the bliss supreme of loving and at twenty years of age of wedding the beloved if ever thou hast clasped the one thou lovest in thine arms wait till to-morrow then thou canst come back childish it is for you to jest this way to-morrow why the bell this morning told thy funeral and i should die this night and who would come to take thee after me i will not to the tomb descend alone young man tis thou must go with me well then i say thee nay and demon i from thee myself deliver i will not obey as i expected very well on what then didst thou swear ah on a trifling thing the memory of thy father's head with ease such oath may be forgotten youthful oaths are light affairs my father father oh my senses i shall lose oh no 
tis but a perjury and treason duke since now the heirs of spanish houses make a jest of breaking promises i'll say adieu he moves as if to leave stay then oh cruel man he raises the vial thus to return upon my path at heaven's door re-enter dona sol without seeing the mask who is standing erect near the balustrade of the stairway at the back of the stage scene six the same dona sol i failed to find that little box ernani aside oh god tis she at such a moment here what is it that thus i frighten him even at my voice he shakes what holdest thou in thy hand what fearful thought what holdest thou in thy hand reply to me the domino unmasks she utters a cry in recognizing don rui tis poison oh great heaven dona sol to ernani what is it that i have done to thee what mystery of horror i'm deceived by thee don juan ah i had thought to hide it all from thee my life i promised to the duke that time he saved it aragon must pay this debt to silva unto me you do belong not him what signify your other oaths to don rui gomez my love is it which gives me strength and duke i will defend him against you and all the world don rui gomez unmoved defend him if you can against an oath that's sworn what oath yes i have sworn no no not bind thee it would be a crime a madness an atrocity no no it cannot be come duke ernani makes a gesture to obey dona sol tries to stop him it must be done allow it dona sol my word was pledged to the duke and to my father now in heaven dona sol to don rui gomez better that to a tigress you should go and snatch away her young than take from me him whom i love know you at all what is this dona sol long time i pitied you and in compassion for your age i seemed the gentle girl timid and innocent but now see eyes made moist by tears of rage she draws a dagger from her bosom see you this dagger old man imbecile do you not fear the steel when eyes flash threat take care don rui i'm of thy family listen mine uncle had i been your child it had been ill for you if you had laid a hand upon my husband she throws away the dagger and falls on her knees before him at thy feet i fall mercy have pity on us both alas my lord i am but a woman weak my strength dies out within my soul i fail so easily tis at your knees i plead i supplicate have mercy on us both dona sol oh pardon with us spaniards grief bursts forth in stormy words you know it alas you used not to be harsh my uncle have pity you are killing me indeed in touching him mercy have pity now so well i love him you love him too much thou weepest no my love no no it must not be i will not have you die to don rui to-day be merciful and i will love you well you also after him the dregs you'd give the remnants of your love and friendliness still less and less oh think you thus to quench the thirst that now devours me 
pointing to ernani he alone is everything for me kind pityings with such affection what pray could i do fury tis he would have your heart your love and be enthroned and grant a look from you as alms and if vouchsafed a kindly word tis he would tell you say so much is enough cursing in heart the greedy one the beggar unto whom he's forced to fling the drops remaining in the emptied glass o oh, shame derision no we'll finish drink he has my promise and it must be kept proceed ernani raises the vial to his lips dona sol throws herself on his arm not yet deign both of you to hear me the grave is open and i cannot wait a moment only duke and my don juan ah oh, both are cruel what is it i ask an instant that is all i beg from you let a poor woman speak what's in her heart oh let me speak i cannot wait my lord you make me tremble what then have i done his crime is rending him dona sol still holding his arm you see full well i have a thousand things to say don rui gomez to ernani die die you must dona sol still hanging on his arm don juan when all said indeed thou shalt do what thou wilt she snatches the vial i have it now she lifts the vial for ernani and the old man to see since with two women i have here to deal it needs don juan that i elsewhere go in search of souls grave oaths you took to me and by the race from which you sprang i go unto your father and to speak among the dead adieu he moves as if to depart ernani holds him back stay duke to dona sol alas i do implore thee wouldst thou wish to see in me a perjured felon only and everywhere i go a traitor written on my brow in pity give the poison back to me tis by our love i ask it and our souls immortal and thou wilt she drinks now take the rest don rui gomez aside twas then for her dona sol returning the half-emptied vial to ernani i tell thee take ernani to don rui seest thou o miserable man grieve not for me i've left thy share ernani taking the vial o oh god not thus would thou have left me mine but thou not thine the heart of christian wife thou knowest not to love as silvas do but i've drunk first made sure now drink it if thou wilt what hast thou done unhappy one twas thou who willed it so it is a frightful death no no why so this filter leads unto the grave and ought we not this night to rest together does it matter in what bed my father thou thyself avenged against me who did forget thee he lifts the vial to his mouth Dona Sol throwing herself on him. Heavens, what strange agony! Ah, oh, throw this filter far from thee. My reason is wandering. Stop! Alas! Oh, my Don Juan! This drug is potent. In the heart it wakes a hydra with a thousand tearing teeth devouring it. I knew not that such pangs could be. What is this thing? Tis liquid fire. Drink not! For much thou'd suffer. 
Anani to Don Rui. Ah, thy soul is cruel. Couldst thou not have found for her another drug? He drinks and throws the vial away. What dost thou? What thyself has done. Come to my arms, young lover, now. They sit down close to each other. Does one not suffer horribly? No, no. These are our marriage rites. But for a bride, I'm very pale, say am I not? Ah, me. Fulfilled is now the fatal destiny. O oh, misery and despair to know her pangs. Be calm. I'm better. Towards new brighter light, we now together open out our wings. Let us with even flight set out to reach a fairer world. Only a kiss. A kiss. They embrace. Oh, agony supreme. Oh, blessed be heaven. Thou wilt for me a life by spectres followed, and by abysses yawning and circled still, yet grants that weary of a road so rough, I fall asleep my lips upon thy hand. How happy are they! Come, come, Dornia soul, all's dark. Dost thou not suffer? Nothing now. Oh, nothing. Seest thou not fires in the gloom? Not yet. Oh, behold. He falls. Don Rui Gomez raising the head which falls again. He's dead. Doña Sol dishevelled and half raising herself on the seat oh no we sleep he sleeps it is my spouse that here you see we love each other we are sleeping thus it is our bridal i entreat you not to wake him my lord duke of mudolce for he is weary she turns round the face of ernani turn to me my love she falls back more near still closer dead oh i am damned he kills himself end of act five end of ernani by victor hugo translated by mrs newton crossland